Rochester campus by Google Meet agenda. And we are here present as Justine Kavakis, Bill Edgerton, Pat Hudson, and Ethan Bowen with guest Jamie Kinarney. You're not a guest, you're like supposed to be here. <laughs> and Anna, what's your last name? Adams. Adams. A. Hey, hey. Oh, cool. Um, uh, A. Hey, hey. And, and uh, Anna. Sorry, I'm going to adjust my brain. Um, so Justin's agenda, uh, we'd like to maybe dive into, let's put celebration of learning after reports to the board. Yeah, that would sound good. Yeah. So that'll be, that'll be seven, eight will become seven, and seven will become eight. Yeah, I wanted, uh, Mr. Chairman, we, we were going to have, um, a brief discussion of the results of our board scorecard on our protocols. And that's and, not here. So I don't see that here. No, and I think we're questioning whether yeah. we could find some time to some Absolutely. discussion items. Uh, I don't think it would take a long time, but I think we committed ourselves to follow it and uh, commit ourselves to it and evaluate ourselves. Uh, the other thing, do we have the core, the governance core? That's under 9.5. So that's okay, 9.5. Thank you. Yep. Put it all in books there. Um, uh, yes. So, how about a 9.6? Or do we want to put it? Yeah, it should be a discussion. 9.7. Nine, nine yep, gotcha. 9.7 will be um, scorecard, board scorecard. And I think we were encouraged last time to get back to setting some times. On this, let me get my watch right here so I can see it. Um, consent agenda, five minutes at most. Public comment, don't know. Board comment, uh, we'll see. Celebration learning, do we know the time on that? Yeah, I think it'll be about six minutes. Six. Uh, superintendent report five? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, principal. She's not here, so I will say five and there's 30. Well, we get the data report that's going to go. Oh, is that part of, oh, that is part of, that's yeah. what it's doing. Okay, so. Gotcha. I think no, 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 that's 15. 15, yeah, at least. Probably even 20. Uh, business manager, five sound good, Tara? And that's, and that's not including the draft, right? Draft yeah, two. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so five. Um, policy committee. Five. Uh, full board update. Oh, yeah, the volunteer. Let's give that 10 just so we can explain. Um, so, Chair, I think the fall academic benchmark might take more than five minutes. Oh, oh no, we have 15. Oh, you okay. got 15. I'm sorry, I changed that 15. Yeah, gotcha. uh, I would even maybe say 20. Gotcha. That does, that does take, but let's do 15 for now. So, let me just. Thank you. Uh, 20, 25, 30. 40, so we got 40 for board reports right now. Um, uh, what, Jamie, Jamie, what's your EI estimate? needs 15 tonight. 15. Uh, student support budget, I'd say that's going to be 15. Yeah, I figured out. At least, yeah, at least 20 to 30 between both documents. So. Yep. And then use of universal instruction budget. I mean, 15 and then he said 30. Oh, it's got you in the 30. Got you. I wasn't. All right. Uh, endowment funds update. I uh, don't know what Amy will say. Let's give her five because that's a report. Uh, book study 10. Is that, or is that too low? Well, let's, let's, let's see whether it's. Okay. Let's try 10. Mm -hmm. And board scored card 10. And let's see if we can, because uh, that's getting us. I would. I, Celebration learning, I would just make 10 because you know those things coming. Okay. There's, it, it isn't, we're in video, you heard that. Yeah, we're going to all, we usually we'll talk comment about it a little bit after. Okay. okay. So let me just see, we're now at five minutes in 15, 30, 40, 45. Right, so that's about. 6.30, 6.30, we should be around 6.30 by the time we get 
done with all the reports and 45. <coughs> just helps me if I have a time that I'm looking at. Uh, the 45 on 25, 6, 7. So then there's 6 30. Oh, yeah, that's a you so said that's about 740 is by the end of discussion. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, consent agenda 4.1 include the minutes of Monday, October 3rd, 2022. And 4.2 include the minutes of Thursday, October 13th, uh, 2022. Uh, the first was regular, the second was the retreat. Um, I felt like there was some more things we talked about in the retreat that were totally in there, but I couldn't remember. <laughs> um, so if that's if that's what we've got, um, I think that's. Uh, there's, is there there's not is there a recording of it? No, is it right? Okay, good. Well, I'll entertain a motion to approve um, as a slate, if you want. Approve both. Minutes. All right. Second. Uh, who approved it? Who moved it? I move it. I move it. Okay. We approve. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. And I want to. Uh, Justine. Aye. aye. Good. So, what do you mean, Bill? I was just going to concur with your email to us that about the retreat that it was well worthwhile. Oh yeah. Um, it was really a way we could communicate and get better acquainted, uh, exchange views, passions, um, and just perspectives on what's going on and what's important. Mm -hmm. And so I'll commend you, Mr. Chairman, for <clears throat> conducting that. And I, I think you were talking about uh, having more of them. Uh, mm -hmm. We support that. But I, I have to and I'll have to remember that because that's a tricky one to remember. Um, but uh, if I put it in my calendar, that would be good. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I have to say that I thought part of the success was sort of jettisoning our agenda. And letting it be free form, which I think yeah, is really not yeah. having an agenda. Yeah, we sort of let it let it go, and I thought we got some really great stuff from Lindy as well out of that. So thank you. Uh, is there and then there being no public on? I assume there's a public contract. Um, so let's start with the superintendent report to the board. No board comment. Mm -hmm. Did anyone have more comment or that was? Yeah, that was his board comment. comment was about Sorry. approving the. Uh... It ran into the notes. I was thinking <laughs> oh, yeah. under notes. Yeah, I was... <laughs> minutes. I always. The um, so you have my report in hand. I. It's hard to believe it's November with this weather, huh? <laughs> yeah, but we're in the thick of it. I, I, one of the things, and I just wanted to highlight, it was in my report, is that we will be rolling out a new, newly revised SU elementary report card um, here in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so that's tied Robert, to our current elementary oh, yeah. proficiencies. Um, so that's exciting news. We're going to have a feedback loop um, on that report card to gather feedback from faculty and parents. Yeah, with the idea being that we we'll probably have to do some revisions. Um, it's also spearheading the kickoff of our work around our refinement around our curriculum, right? And so we're going about that. The high school is currently focused on some work that's happening with the Agency of Education to redo proficiencies at the high school level. The elementary, this revision of the report card and saying we're actually going to report out in the report card to the proficiencies that we have at the elementary level is the idea being that we're shining the light on what our and curriculum documents sorry. say for ends. Um, let me move in so you can get by me. No worries. So I'm excited about that. That's a few years in the making, of that work. And then um, the other thing that we, Anda and I met uh, with our community schools coordinator, Mary Shell, and that grant was originally received um, at the middle school, the right way middle school, but the idea is in year two and three of that grant is that we start to do more work SU-wide. We're in year two of the grant right now, and so we're going to have a monthly 
dinner and conversations. We're calling it community conversations. You'll see a flyer come out about that. Excellent. That will be up around town. So those conversations are going to happen on the second Wednesday of the month. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually be facilitated and led by uh, mostly WRVSU teachers, staff, um, and administrators, but it will come with a dinner too. We're hoping to set it up hybrid for the conversation part at least. Um, and also uh, have some high schoolers provide childcare is the idea. So that will be rotating across the districts of the SU. So that's something um, that we're hoping to gain some momentum in um, throughout the rest of the year. Um, and so other than that, the state board meeting on um, Lincoln is going to be a week from um, Wednesday. I, I intend to go. What's the date? Um, um, so that's the 16th. 16th. And what time? And where? Do you know where? I have not seen the agenda yet on the location. Okay. But they probably, rotate it. Probably same time. Yeah, I, they tend to meet at that around that timing because they typically go to a location, have a tour of the school. Okay. And then they hold their meeting in the afternoon. Okay. As soon as I know, I'll share it out. Great, thank you. I mean, do you think it would help if we show up again? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, because I really think it, at the end of the day, it, it, it is as much a political decision yep. in regards to the state board mm -hmm. um, as anything. I don't think legally we can't argue against, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that what we can do is speak to them about the rules that they have, I think the heart of Act 46, the financial impacts for RSU, and I think also they, them hearing a unified front in regards to why we oppose a possible decision of Lincoln coming into the SU certainly strengthens um, our case. So um, if anybody can make the time, you know, I do feel this is a big one to show up for. Uh, <laughs> So a question of clarification, you said legally, it's, and I can't find it, but if you read Act 46 and what Lincoln's asking for, it's contrary to Act 46. So to me, that's legal. Are you, so just are to you remind speaking you, to the idea that the board has Act the 40, decision? Act 46 is no longer on the books. Okay, that's the legal. Yeah. Okay. But we were all together based on Act 46. I know. Just to remind everyone, that's the problem, right? The legal document, Act 46, has sunset. That is no longer a law. Nor can the state board enforce it. So what is the law for that, for mergers and acquisitions? <laughs> yeah, it's voluntary. There's, remember, Act 46 was all about force merger. It wasn't about voluntary merger. Interesting. I missed that whole history. Okay. Anyway, that's not about this report, but that's... Yeah, so we've is. spoken to two different legal counsels now, and both have been really clear. There's no legal grounds for us to oppose. There's nothing we could legally do or say to the state board that would stop their ability to place a district within our... Their system. ability. But well, they, they're still educators. And well, 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 yeah. Right. So that's why I think it's a political decision as much as anything. Well, well, you know, I mean, and, and I feel quite strongly that there might be a point where we say no. And see there would be happens. no legal grounds for us to no, say no. I, but at the same time, do they are they going to enforce it? So I work at the <laughs> leisure, just so the board yeah. re remembers, the superintendent works at the leisure of the secretary of ed. Oh, okay. So before you could hire me, you need a secretary of ed approval. So in the S in statute, the SU boundaries are drawn by the State Board of Education. This is why it's important you want to show up. It really is. This is um, where is it? Wednesday. We don't know yet, but it'll be a week from Wednesday during the Friday in the afternoon. Yes, yeah. sir. There's all these nuances. That's why I, I yeah. and I appreciate I yeah, yeah, and those. I, that's why I've been us on the conservative side of it because we don't know. Well, I just talked to Tara, you know, before the SU meeting and she was like, and it didn't help that I'm being asked to prepare an entire budget to bring this school in because the three possible SUs. So she's got that on her plate along with the audit and budget season. And um, I mean, this is really serious. That's why I put this letter out and I worded my letter so strongly. 
I just don't want to leave it a chance, or if there's something, oh boy, I wish we'd had more people show up. Anyway, sorry, I don't want to. No, no, you're good. I think your... definitely there's a strength in numbers. If we could put out a thing to people to show up, if we show up. Okay, sorry. Uh, anything else? Are you done with your report? Yeah, unless you guys have other questions. Questions yeah. for the superintendent's report. I have none. All right. Is there oh, sorry. a way we can get a invite to that? Like a Google invite? Sure. Yeah. Yep. That'd be great. That'd be that would be a very good idea. Well, yeah, that, so that you could even if you couldn't be there, you could be on and your name would be taken. Yeah, as soon as the agenda comes out, I'll send it around, but I'll also put a Google yeah. invite in your yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. A lot, a lot of people would probably be willing. Right, because a lot of people would just show up and yeah. then they, they yeah. be counted and, and be counted and, and probably even speak. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, actually, <coughs> very good. Yeah, they don't use Google. Are they? They're yeah, yeah. They are so high. Yeah. Um, At least they were last month. Any or two months other ago. questions for our superintendent? Looking for a phone call. Robert. You got it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, very good. Uh, will you be handling the principal report? Did you all see the email? Yeah, we'll, we'll tag team it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is false. Do you have any, before we go to the data report, does anyone have any specific questions about the principal, the written report, before the, you know, Aside from the data report, one thing I was going to ask her about is that we had spoken the other day about doing a roundtable discussion with parents whose kids are currently in various different middle schools. And so that other parents of rising middle schoolers could come and ask questions about the experience. Obviously, That's a great Katie idea. Woodstock and um, uh, and she said she liked that idea and that we would mm -hmm. look into making that happen. I think that's a great idea, and I, I know that, um, you know, when we were searching for uh, where my daughter was going to go, I didn't really feel a strong um, presence of the uh, Bethel campus or the South Bronx, and I just didn't feel like, I don't know, it was just getting started, but um, that would probably be a good, a good idea. Well, I, and I think along with that, if, uh, if the... Um, if the campus is has wants to send a representative to that meeting as well, I yeah, that's a very good idea. And I think we would push to have it be for fifth and sixth graders. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good design. Yeah, because by by now, I mean, you really need to already kind of know where your sixth grader is going to go because by the time you get transcripts and, and yeah, well, yeah it's it's really as tough. you said, choice class, course choices were happening in January. Right. They were signing the signing the kids up for the seventh grade courses um, in January, and so. Yeah. Um, yeah, yep. you, you don't realize see, that you can't oh, wait. You don't want to yeah. wait as long as you think you have. <laughs> I'm in a complete denial. But uh, I'm not. Uh, but uh, Justine, do you have a comment? Yeah, I had a question. <clears throat> in reading the section about enrichment, I wanted to. I, I don't. I, I wanted to ask Lindy about um, music and if there had been anything more with getting any music into the school, even through that enrichment section. So we still have we still have um, two music folks doing instrumental lessons, Justine, that we're offering students that we're contracting for, and we've re we've reposted the music advertisement, and refreshed it once again, with the hope that we could still secure someone through conversations with Principal Stetson. I think that part of the concept that she's going to try to implement too is continuing to increase artists in residence as an opportunity too for performing arts. Throughout the rest of the year, John That's, Gilmore is, the, yeah. is a definite, and there's one other I thought. So that's the approach. That doesn't take off the table the fact, though, that we are still trying to search. Yeah, well. no, I just meant with the the enrichment. It, it, music wasn't mentioned in this report, and I knew John Gilmore was coming in February, but I I just wanted to know if anything was happening before then. Oh, and just so you know, I have uh, officially said I would like to teach a drama enrichment um, on Friday afternoon. And so there she's going to talk about schedule with the faculty tomorrow afternoon and then get back to me about when that can fit. And I'm very excited about doing that with the kids. And I'll be here and in Stockbridge. 
Uh, two points on that, Justin. One is the Summer Music for Kids program that was initiated this year, this summer at the Rochester, primarily Rochester here, but Rochester, Stockbridge, and neighboring towns, um, which um, we basically had 16 kids, uh, instrumentalists. They had a wonderful concert at the end of the, in August, and we um, decided to continue it. So we had instrumental lessons i think for another six the same 16 kids and free rental of instruments and that sort of thing and we're going to be providing i think free instrument rentals or not the classes but through the winter so that has happened and i just want to say also is that i can't speak for the stockbridge trustees of public funds but i know the trustees of public funds have in the past financially supported um special arts creativity music uh, programs that were brought in um for uh, for the school so i would i would think that um that's another source to tap if there is need for funding yeah. uh, to do that because i we all around the table are, are, are talking about the importance of music and the arts and getting that young and getting kids excited and so that's just another your your budget for a music educator so those funds certainly can cover what we're spending right now with contracted services and or bringing Artists and residents. In. Well, uh, hopefully for next year. We might. Yes, that's the goal. Absolutely. There was some talk about a change in where I don't know where I heard this that they might be some change in the state as to certification rules for music teachers, art teachers, things like that, because they're having so much trouble getting them. Have you heard anything about that? I think there's been talk in general uh, at the state level and, and certainly at the state board around what could be some of the barriers right now for us in regards to finding local, uh, licensed educators. And yeah. other states have done some creative things um, to assist schools with licensure. Um, thus far, there, other than talking, I haven't seen any momentum in that okay. direction. Um, certain other than what we always had as tools which were provisional licenses or emergency license but they recognize yeah. the issue yeah. Yeah. yeah all right we should if there's no other thing else on that thank you justine for bringing that on. um we're also going to be talking about this obviously when we look at our budget as well because we want to make sure i already have some comments on point point twoage and point sixage and all that kind of thing um, so let's get to the meat of this, which is the report. Uh, benchmark, uterine selective and potential. <clears throat> yeah, if we can. Remember, you just read the text. Read the text, forget about the. Oh, forget about the graphic. <laughs> well, I was, this is a new graphic, though. So there is a little bit of new graphic. So, we do have a new assessment system that we are using for our kind of universal screener and benchmarks that we use um, over the course of the year. So, it's over kind of mostly in three seasons, or so fall, winter, and spring. So, some of the graphics are a little bit different, um, but we can, we can talk through that. Um, just to say that we have all of our, just to give the background, all of our first through sixth graders here in Rochester and Stockbridge took the Track My Progress assessment uh, in both math and English language arts. Uh, they're computer adaptive assessments. They take uh, on average about 24 minutes a piece and you do one one day and then the other one another day, either usually like a week later, all depending on sort of schedules. Um, for folks that were at our um, SU wide board meeting at the end of October, we talked a little bit about sort of um, information that we had from kids about this new assessment, um, which was, you know, their, their sort of their reflection on it, which actually came from students here in Rochester and Stockbridge, um, was the, you know, the assessment was easy and hard. And as I sort of explained at that point, that that is actually a really good way for kids to sort of identify what a computer adaptive test is. So there are questions that are going to feel easier. And then the computer says, okay, they got it. I'm going to give them a harder question within these standards. And that's what the kids are trying, okay, it gets hard. And so that's a way to get sort of as much as you can, as much information about what kids know in about 30 questions without having the, you know, the test take oh, forever. Yeah, and it, they, it, it changes the question. Yeah, so not, you know, if you have, if you have 15 kids in a classroom, they're all taking a different test. A different test. Wow. Um, so that's, that's anyway, so yeah, it's helpful for folks I to know that. I know that's, that. that's fascinating. Um, 
So that's that's the base. So we'll look at some, you know, what we'll be looking at mostly today is the track my progress data. We'll look at one graphic in each map in ELA that tries to compare this year's data to last year's data, and we'll just talk about there's just a lot of caveats in being able to do that comparison. But I think it's helpful to at least get it in front of us, just because there are two different assessments. Last year in, in these schools, we were using STAR 360. This year, we were using Track My Progress, so just they're not the same assessment. Okay. Um, so in general, this is our percent of um, students at each grade level meeting or exceed, and exceeding expectations. So blue and green are the, the general so colors. Really focus that? It's a little fuzzy. Uh, no, no, I think no. it's the way it comes off the okay, yeah. their, off their right, well, website. You want to look, I've got it for two. Um, so, uh, yeah, blue and green are generally meeting and exceeding expectations, and red and yellow are sort of students that are below and, um, and beginning towards those expectations. Uh, and this is by grade level across the whole district. Um, Nice chart. I mean, it's a nice yeah. way to look at the data. This, this one comes right from Track My Progress. So, in, in one way, it just from a this it makes it a little bit easier. Like it's spent a lot of this, yeah, spent a lot less time doing hand calculations with this program. Sorry, but we're still in the first graphic. Yes, I guess okay. we are. Yeah, we're yeah. yeah. The second one. That I was All right, so we'll go down to the second one. So this is one. This one is a little harder because this is the yeah. easiest. This is a way to do it. I, I will take feedback on it. This is basically looking at last year's data and this year's data, same kids. So that's why we use class of. Oh, like that. Okay. So for math, for so, so for math, we tested uh, with first through sixth grade. So those are our second graders this year through our sixth graders. So the first two <coughs> vertical lines are this year's second graders. The next two are this year's third graders, yeah. this year's fourth graders, okay. this year's fifth graders, and this year. Very, I couldn't figure out how to do a different color now. I'm so glad you're asking. I just, if yeah. you put a, a, a grade number above the two. Well, it could be, but it's a different grade, right? So it's on the class well, yeah, of, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So or class even of four, class five, of, yeah. four dash five, three dash four, something like that, just so we could. Because well, I, 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 I didn't know what year they were graduating. This is from high I school. I corresponded it to these grades underneath, so maybe if they were just spaced yep. like that, to do that yeah. then maybe that would be more helpful. If this is second grade, third yeah. grade. Yeah, I didn't so notice I that. that up right away. Yeah, so you're the math person. That's yeah. why you notice the numbers, the parallel numbers. That you're but going. again, you are um, comparing two different tests, yep. right? We so changed, that, so the assessment changed and the timing changed a little bit based on feedback that we got that there was too much going on in September. We, had our, we were welcoming our kids into our buildings. Yep. We're really trying to think about setting those expectations, making yep. sure kids know routines. And so we moved this assessment to October. Yep. And so it just, it's a little bit different. I still think it's, you know, it's baseline for the year, but it's just, I, I for for a lot of reasons, I just like to know, make sure we know all the things that um, could be affecting mm -hmm. uh, how things look. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm gonna ask again, just mm -hmm. to make sure. Um, so were these the same test these two years? No. Yeah, so we are looking at results from one test and then results from a different test. Yeah. Okay, so that's a little hard to keep. Yeah, exactly. I thought we could have left this out and I think yeah. if we had left it out, the question here would have been, well, how does this compare to last yeah, yeah, year? Yeah. And then you would and have so said, well, you can't compare it to last year. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's yeah. Okay. I will have. I think. I think when we um, when we look, we get together in February and look at our you know our fall and our winter and start to see that growth. I think we'll have a lot better chance. You know, I think it'll be an even richer conversation about you know what are how what information are we getting from this and how are we acting on it. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So the next one is um, you, you all have heard from us a lot over the last year and a half about scale score. Um, as being um, something that makes uh, is a way of looking at the data that helps us really think about uh, you know what are what are kids learning and how are they how are they progressing forwards. What the ideal way that this graph will look is really even steps sort of between each grade level. So the scale score kind of grows, the expectations each year grow, they even grow during the year. Um, so you see grades two and three are meeting expectations for this time in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, grade one is just uh, a, just a slight, like three scale score points below that, so that is almost blue. And then the other ones you start to see a little bit further off of that where, the, um, where you want. This is looking at the whole grade as an average uh, into one sort of one score one score. When we're looking at this data in the school level, we're looking at the individual students and seeing, all right, how far off are they? Where do we want to make, you know, are they really close to um, meeting expectations? Are they further away? And that's how we start making some decisions around what kind of instruction are we changing? You know, how are those kids learning? What kind of groups do we need? Those sorts of things. 
Sorry, in this 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 bar graph, um, how do we know what is uh, the number for proficiency? So right, if you uh, if you look at the chart that's right below it. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. So these two go together. So in the fall, those yeah. numbers on the far left, those are the expectations for the fall. So you can see that grade one just you know right. just barely making missing it. Uh, grade two is a little above. Grade three is flat on. It's a seven oh seven, and then you see the other grades. And then just so we start to see where we're heading. The, um, the numbers on the right hand side are the expectations for the winter and then again in the spring. Goodness, yeah. But the number, I have to say, I mean, the numbers are not far off. No. For proficiency no. at all. Yeah. That's, no, I, think that's, that's, I mean, if, if, you know, I guess just my visual, I would, if, if there is, if you are taking feedback, just that the number be on the bar, you know, if, if we could see it. But I guess you're right. I can just know to look down here. Um, because then you might get confused to what their number what actually is. Yeah. But the fact is, should be. this looks very, this actually looks pretty darn good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we're a lot closer to the to the benchmark than we sh than you might think. And as you say, oops, thank you. Okay. Um, and then the, one more graph for math. Now this is really, this is where we really start to think about what is, what are we doing differently in the classroom and what's, you know, what's working and what do we want to change? So this is looking at all of the domains that are included within sort of the content area of math. Um, and uh, this is sort of how we divide up and you can see um, some of those domains are tested across almost all of our grade levels and some of the domains are not tested. Uh, they're only tested maybe in, in, this, in this school's in the sixth grade, like they're sixth, seventh, eighth grade. So we, where you see that only 13 kids were tested in that domain, mm -hmm. that's a that's a state, that's a domain that's only for sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Mm -hmm. And so in this, you know, in, in this district, that's just going to be that you know that your sixth graders here. Um, something like uh, you know, yeah, num base 10 um, operations and algebraic thinking. That's almost all of our students. So these proficiencies are for for the. <clears throat> the overall population, and you don't separate those per grade. We do when we start looking at, yeah. I mean, oh, you do. Oh, okay. yeah. No, this is a good idea. Uh, oh, no, we do when we're looking at I mean, for for presenting mm -hmm. at the district level. We don't, yeah, we don't get to it out by all uh, individual grade levels. I'm sure we could do it, but when, yeah, when the so when we so we meet as a as you got in here, we meet as an MTSS leadership team. That's the interventionist, classroom teachers, um, myself, and Lindy. We're sort of looking at this level and then we're diving deeper. And then they meet um, as a staff at each building in data teams. And they're looking directly at their own students at their classroom and looking at sort of where these things are. And that's where when you see the, the analysis um, narrative at the bottom, it's really looking at what are the strands that pull across? What are the, what's the work that we want to be doing sort of school-wide, district-wide? What are the things that individual classes need to be working on? Um, they are finding that kids, um, some of the questions that have been challenging are there's questions that ask you to sort of um, check all of the right answers without actually telling you how many right answers there are going to be. Mm -hmm. And so some of our kids are more uh, ready to just being like, all right, there's one right answer. I'll check that. And then they only get the question one third right because there are actually three, like three correct answers. All of the shapes, you know, all of the shapes that are, you know, are equilateral or, you know, those sorts of things. And so those are types of things. They're both, you know, test taking skills, but they're also kind of life taking skills. Like, you know, the doctor's going to be one. Are answer. they forewarned that there could be multiple? The way answers? the question is, is asked, it sort of it indicates they're check all. Gotcha. But if they're not used to it, they're not. So also yeah, yeah, when we yeah. think about a baseline, it's both their baseline and their skills and knowledge, and also their baseline and how these questions are asked. And so part of the reason it's not sneaky, right? Like well, I was going to say <laughs> cheating. Well, yeah. 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 It's always sneaky. Yeah, it's, yeah. Always, so, it's, it's yeah. preparing them to read closely. Yeah, it's yeah. preparing them to understand that there might be more than one answer, and it's getting them ready. Next time they take it, they'll be like, "Oh, I saw this before. I know what to do." Right. So we'll, that's where we see, you know, we'll see some of the growth hopefully in January. That is just familiarity, and then also growth around knowledge and skills. Yeah. Two two things. Oh, oh, oh don't forget me. Oh boy, that was fun. No. Um, <laughs> do the type of question that you ask on this test does does it, do all those questions end up in the classroom as well? They could. So one of the great things about Track My Progress 
uh, is that you can see every individual question that a kid gets asked. So the teacher can. The teacher can. And then they can see. Yep. And you can see uh, what they answered. Great. You can see sort of what the right answers were if those are not the same. You can see how long they took to answer that question. So you can see whether it was like a four second answer or like a three minute answer. It takes a lot of time for the teacher to have to look at all this stuff. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. So I think you, know, you really tend to, you don't do that with every single kid on every single question. But obviously, but if it's kids struggling, depth. you want you to look more in depth yeah. depending if a kid or if a kid's. And then you also need to know what to do with it afterwards, right? Like you've got to say, all right, now I've got all this data from this set system. How does this map onto the construction material I have? And so folks like Faye, you know, are really helpful in helping our teachers learn that. They're also, you know, there's there's ways that these things map on, but it is it is it is a lot of work that our teachers do. Yeah. Yeah. Without a good, without a yeah. question. Any other questions on math? We'll, we'll flip to English language arts so I don't go over my a lot of time. Yeah, good. Thank you. All right. Uh, so the, the, this is going to be exactly the same. I have a question, but I'll just have to go through both. Okay. All right. So English language arts, the, the, the report is laid exact, exactly the same. So this is our percentage of students who are meeting or exceeding expectations um, for this year. So, you know, you, we, I would say we do have a little, we're a little bit wondering about what's happening in third grade. Um, there, but I think we will, uh, you know, I think that's a, a place that we can certainly, when we see something like that, we know, all right, so universal instruction, those, those students in our third grade, and of course, there's going to be across two different buildings, um, need, need more support, and then we can look in which domains it is. Is it in foundational skills? Is it in sort of their vocabulary and conventions of standard English? Those sorts of things that we can get um, and be able to focus on that. Okay. Uh, the next graph down again is the comparison from last year to this year. Um, again, changes include uh, the actual assessment, the timing, and for this one, last year we did the English language arts from third grade up, and this year we started with first grade doing it. So we don't have the, um, the comparison cohort data for what would be this year's second and third graders. So this graph starts with fourth grade, is the first two columns, fifth grade is the middle two columns, and sixth grade is the last two columns. And again, we're comparing two different tests. Two different tests. Two different tests. But I would say one of the things that I value about this test is, in literacy especially is, um, I think I'll make brief. Yeah, I have shared this with it. I think that this assessment does a lot more in regards to encoding, so spelling, mm -hmm. um, than STAR 360 did. I would also say that it definitely digs into vocabulary more. Um, and STAR 360 did. So In terms of analyzing or asking? Asking questions. Okay. Um, and so with that, when, when Lindy talks in the report about foundational skills and us spending um, more focused time and resources in regards to phonics and phonemic awareness universally, that is an area that we had identified as a weakness, mm -hmm. SU wide. Mm -hmm. And I would say that the Track My Progress data is certainly speaking to that Great. across the SU. So we may be seeing things that were getting missed in the previous test. Seeing where I definitely, yeah, there's definitely more questions focused on those foundational skills within this um, assessment, where uh, STAR 360 tended to be much more focused on reading comprehension. Mm -hmm. um, okay. That's great. great. And you'll see that when you go down to the broken yeah, out yeah. components um, within ELA, you'll see that some of those foundational skills are some of the areas where we're struggling the most based on this assessment. I Sorry, I don't. No, I really appreciate that. I think I've also, Star 360 last year was the first year I had used it, and so even just trying to understand what it was asking was not always easy to do if you're not actually the student taking the test. So I actually, I know, I appreciate some of the historical perspective on sort of that, you know, what, what are some of the changes. Um, so this graphic is again showing us the, um, using this scale score against the state expectations. Um, and I, I have said this before, but it's worth saying again, we. We have our state has high expectations, um, and we the bar is set high in Vermont and regionally, you know, in New England for students. Uh, if we were to select the national average, these colors and numbers would look very different. Um, but this is right; these are where our kids live. These are where our, our expectations are. Mm -hmm. I know that sometimes it can feel frustrating to see your kids in red, given how hard we know our teachers work. Um, but we also know that we've got gaps that. Um, that we have to help fill for kids. And so it's better to have the information rather than just say, 
ah, we're just going to have low expectations for kids. So that's mm -hmm. um, that's where we are here. So this is uh, again on the bottom chart is really showing that that color column is where uh, we are in relationship to those expectations in the fall, and then also where uh, and these numbers are the same for math and ELA. The scale score don't change across the content area. I got to say too. I mean, we're we're in the hundred. You know, we're in the hundred of expectations. You know, it's not like we're the expectation is 770 and we're 500, you know, or 400. It's within, right? So, like it's, you can see so where the difference is. If you look sort of vertically between the grade levels, right? Between yeah. first and second grade, there's about a, what is that, a 94 point um, change, right? Like mm -hmm. we're expecting, you know, the kids to grow almost 100 scale score points from first grade to second grade. Mm -hmm. So if you were 100 off, you'd be, a, you know, an entire grade level behind. Yeah. Okay. So that's one way. And then, but those, that number, that difference between grade levels gets narrower as the years go on. So between five and six, that's about 45. Mm -hmm. Testing my public math right now. <laughs> I'm most comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the, you know, those, yeah, anyway. So those, the, that's. Um, well, I just, I, you know, because I think it's so easy to look at. Yeah. Color coding can have a lot of emphasis to it. And the fact is, um, minus 35 is really, Pretty darn good, I think, for a whole class cohort. Because um, you know they're going to be handing me a well, this, these assessments, these benchmarks have not decreased due to COVID. Mm -hmm. These are the same benchmarks we had prior to COVID. And you've read the national news. And, you know, to see our, our third and fourth graders struggling in literacy right now, like, yeah, because they were first and second graders. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. Which is the, like a, the meat and potatoes. I truly yeah. believe we are now Learning. finally in recovery mode. Yep. yep. Last year was not recovery mode at all, right? But we kept saying we're in recovery mode, the state, right? Like we're using ESSER funds to recover. We Last year, we we're, had... We're making it work. SBAC, yeah. I mean, SBAC, sorry. COVID had more of an impact, I believe, on educational operations last year. As far as attendance, mm -hmm. uh, teachers' ability to be in the building than the previous year. So I actually feel like this year we're starting to get into recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, so the last graphic for English language arts is that proficiency by the domains assessed. So again, we've got um, I guess it's, what, six, six domains. Uh, foundational skills is uh, assessed first through fifth grade. Um, and some are just on the later, I think, vocabulary. Oh, the rest of them, I think, are all all students. So it's just knowledge of language. Yeah, all of those are. Um, so the rest of them are all assessed all you know first through sixth grade, and foundational skills is just it's through fifth grade. Um, but you can see, right? You can see that sort of foundational skills is what we're talking about. This is what we had already identified last year. Um, we've got all of our reading interventionists who are spending a lot of time. Um, really growing their skills and how to address this. We've got a number of teachers who are taking it. We've spent um, Title I funds to get materials that are aligned with what we know about the, how students learn to read. This is, a, this is something that has changed dramatically in the last 10 years um, and probably even in the last five years in terms of the, how, what we're really learning about how kids learn to read. You would think that we would have figured this out 100 years ago, but right, it is just there's dramatic changes around this um, and we are really aligning our practices to that work. And so I, um, I'm fairly confident that we will see um, some really good progress there. Right. I think the other thing just to note maybe overall, and I know Bill's got some um, some questions, is that uh, Ethan referenced the um, the national data. The national data, again, um, is obviously is national. The biggest hits were to math. And there, it makes a lot of sense for that because I think, you know, in general, kids probably experience less direct instruction around math if they're not in a classroom, right? There's just our world is sort of oriented around literacy. That is not the case here in Rochester and Stockbridge. That those math scores really have stayed pretty well. And I think there's a lot that has gone into sort of keeping that, keeping that. And I just think it's a call out to sort of the, the commitment these buildings have made to saying we're, we are committed to math. It's not to say they're not committed to ELA, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they are actually bucking sort of the national trend in math. And I think ELA is certainly a place to work and I'm not, uh, I think they have worked hard too. It's, it's, it's worth calling out on the math that they, they they're, we're seeing something different here than what we have seen nationwide in terms of math in the last couple of years. Okay. Phil, you had a question. Yeah. Um, first, the headlines on the national test scores 
um, and, the, and the word from the secretary, the National Secretary of Education, um, and experts was was pretty gloomy. Um, they tested nationwide uh, fourth graders and eighth graders in math and in reading, and uh, um, in both cases they had substantial decreases in proficiency um, since the last time, which was uh, 2019. Uh, they didn't test, or they didn't include tests for during the COVID period. So this is kind of a pre, first pre-COVID. Um, uh, but I wanted to ask um, Anna um, if you could kind of translate the national results in reading and math for fourth and eighth graders with what we're looking at here at Rochester and Stockbridge. How are we doing there? Well, I think, yeah, I mean, as I said, I think the math, it, it looks different here. Mm -hmm. And I think it has, it has been uh, a place of, uh, you know, in, in the year and a half, I've been here continuous growth uh, in that in that area. There are, um, there's a lot that is happening around ensuring that students have, you know, um, really strong number sense, um, and get sort of the, the that progression um, from sort of um, sort of addition into multiplication, right? Like all of that way that they're heading, and I think we're just, we're seeing really good growth there. There's some some pockets that we want to to focus on, but there's all um, there's positive signs that what is being done here, both in classrooms with the support of um, some interventionists, that it it looks really positive. Uh, in terms of English language arts, I think the you know I. Certainly, in the graphic showing um, as as um, Jamie said, that third and fourth grade cohort is certainly um, you know compared to the their peers in the other in the other grades is um, probably the lowest down, um, and you know missed some foundational time with teachers. Um, and then I think and I think this this kind of shift to really think about the role that phonics and phonemic awareness play in students really being able to you know, decode words and then encode them um, and to become proficient readers, not based on being able to predict um, you know, what, what the pattern is or you know, using picture clues, which is a lot of some of the re reading instruction that has happened um, in kind of previous years across the country. Uh, you know, they're just there's a lot stronger ways to teach, and I think that's that, that's what we're seeing right now is um, starting to see that take seed, and I think we will see that sort of push up through. We've got sort of students who are receiving intervention, getting a lot of that right now in the upper grades, and then all of our you know our younger kids are going you know, to be receiving much more of that focused um, what we call the structured literacy approach. I was um, under the impression when we set our our SU goals for academic performance that the goal for reading was to uh, exceed the state standard by 2025 with math it was to get there mm -hmm. and that was based on the fact that we were lagging more than math had appeared in reading or that we felt more optimistic that we could move quicker in reading than math and as it turns out on this test I'm not comparing with last year just this test is that math is considerably outperformed reading. That is so true. that's true in this is that district. that true for all of SU or just uh, us here in Rochester and Stockbridge? Mm -hmm. and, and what's going on? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's I mean, not true. If, if we can say yay, yay, and I say yay, yay, on the math side, I think that's to celebrate here. Do we, uh, do we have some signals here that we need to change our approach or our resources or our time, whatever energy in the, uh, on the reading side? So I think there are two questions there. One, the data, the data don't look the same across every district. When we look at the SUI data, you will see it aligns more to our, uh, our English language arts. When we set those goals, we're higher than that. So we had we had the expectation that we could continue to grow yeah. on that, um, and I'm, I'm hoping. I mean, 2025 is still a little bit of ways away, but I do think we right, we have seen some setbacks. I don't think we were expecting after last year. Yeah. Uh, in terms of changing, of course, here in ELA, I think that's exactly what we've done, right? Like I think we have really, um, if you look at sort of where our resources have gone over the summer uh, and this year, we uh, have not taken anything away from from math, and we have really rethought what we're doing with literacy um, in terms of making sure that, uh, yeah, we are kind of changing our approach to instruction there and not relying on those things like predictive text and um, curriculum. What's the impact of um, 
I go back to spring training and, and baseball or any training, and it takes time to get into shape. Okay, so you, you do your wind sprints and your uh, jumping jacks and you run the uh, suicide and everything else. And uh, so, uh, would we expect and looking at our test scores and just things that the, the, the January results would show um, some some change from what we're seeing here in our fall test? Or is well, it just, I, I mean, I think you just can't say. We've identified that foundational skills as an area that we needed to grow. And so we've done, again, we haven't done a one size fits all approach to how we're going to teach foundational skills, meaning phonics and phonemic awareness. So many of our districts are approaching that through uh, something called foundations, which is comes out of Wilson Reading and um, a program called Hagerty that does phonemic awareness. Your district is going to have their primary grade teachers engage in professional development and utilize resources in direct instruction, which Jamie Feinberg does. So we'll have a district that's going to be using that universally. And so with that, the plan is to really have launched in DI at the first of the year bill. So I don't think you're going to see those foundational skills take off, at least until we're seeing next fall here. Um, what I would say to you is, is that I am with Onda. I still believe that we're going to meet our goals in 2025. I think we have an assessment now that is really <laughs> highlighting what we were believing was an area of concern around our universal approach to reading instruction. So I would actually say it's been a bit affirming, I think, for some of us that we have these foundational gaps and we now have an assessment that I think is helping us highlight those. Gaps. Okay, and I'll talk more about that when we get to the budget. Um, yeah. I just want to we about three minutes to being on six thirty, which was the end of all reports. I know. No, no, it's, it's a favorite subject. No, 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 I know. Well, I just, I just want to run. Thank you. It's my job. Thank you. Is, and I have to. I do have to run that jihad. Yeah. Right back. Yeah. Um, I guess the last question, and I think you have the answers. One of the reports I read about the national exam talked about the, the decline, and they, and they were just really draconian words used uh, about the decline in math and reading for, uh, nationwide. And then the question was, well, gee, the, it only went down five or eight points. Um, this is a question that relates to Ethan's comments. They only went down five to eight points. And the, the reading I had was that's dramatic and it's very hard to 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 regain that three and that five and eight points sometimes over a series of years that it isn't like oh it's only down 25 points 50 points they're talking about the norm going down or up it's like three points and so and I'm looking at this thing is that really speaks to our challenge because I'm taking that three points and I'm going, we only have three years to reach our goal. And we, we and our goal for reading is exceed the 50% and math that's to get there. And I'm looking at these things and I'm saying, wow, I take three for each year, three, six, nine points. Well, we're behind more than nine points. And we're gonna decrease the, the percentage of kids in the red. So my point is, and when I get to the budget is, I, we really wanna focus on, it's, it, it's like, doing everything we can to get the kids with math and music, uh, I mean, in music and arts, are we doing everything we need to do as a board to make sure that we give the resources to our budget so that we can achieve those goals? Because when I'm reading some of this and I'm looking at our graphs and it's, it's daunting. And I don't want to be in a position where, oh, I didn't know, but we were asking you to basically do the impossible. Uh, that's not our job. Our job is to give you the tools to make it possible. So I just I'll uh, pass that on to when we get to the budget. But I think it's very important. It's like you said in an earlier meeting. I'm ready to make sure that we spend whatever it takes to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And I feel the same way about uh, literacy and math. And so we need the guidance from you and from Jamie on do we have everything in our budget? And and, and we've got the thing on on special ed and. Uh, um, on classroom teaching that we're going to be reviewing tonight. So that's one of the questions I'll be asking then. Are, um, do we have what it takes? Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean more teachers it might be different or training curriculum you explained. But um, if that's true, only you do three to five points change in a year, 
how do we do more than that if we have to? Well, don't, well, let's see, I have a slightly different approach to it than you do, Bill. Yeah. And, um, and that is that um, all this is based on faith and trust. That we have faith in you and trust in you that you are doing the best you can with the tools you have. And that there's only so much that we can do. I think you're right. I think this is where we do both. That we, we harp on, well, that isn't where, that isn't going toward 25, our goals are 25. And the other part is that then there has to be a part where we go, okay, yes, we're giving you what you need. Now we trust you and we support you. Go do it. And I think that's that's got to go hand in hand. Yeah, and the nice thing we've got here is a team, yeah. administrative team and yeah, a exactly. governance team that we have trust, trust and confidence in each other. So that we're not asking as we mistrust. It isn't like we don't believe you can do it. We don't believe your numbers and all that sort of stuff. It's, 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 it's a deeper one, which is... <laughs> How do we do it? Yeah. Do you have and, enough resources? And what do you do? And if do not, yeah. let's give you more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think okay. right. And, and the resource um, situation is going to be changing. Right. We've we've had the um, right. We've had additional resources that will run out next year through this recovery planning. Well, and so cliff. some of the things yeah. that we are able to do right now this year and react what I think is react fairly quickly to things that we identify that we will not have that luxury. We're trying to use it as strategically now to make sure we're getting those resources. But I like what I realized when I was at my, our classrooms is we, we have more of these texts that are like all about prediction. And I was like, well, that's not teaching anyone really to read. So right, we have to go get these things called decodable readers to make sure that everyone's got something that they are using the skills to decode to actually to learn to read. And so mm -hmm. it's not something we, do, we just didn't have that many. So that's the type of thing we're using resources now because they won't, doesn't go away like I said, you know, they, they will be here. When the extra money is gone, so those types of those are the yeah. kinds of conversations we're Spend having. Spend the money now while we've got it. Wait, also, we have, I'll just also say, in 20 years in education, I have worked around the world. I have also never done a pandemic before. So, right, like we, I also think, Nobody knows. right? No, we don't yeah. know. We didn't. We didn't know what last year was going to look like. We, you know, we have an idea now. I think we are. I agree with um, the superintendent that we're heading in the right direction, um, and this year feels calmer in some ways. <laughs> um, but I just, I think we also, if we think about our goals for 25, we have academic goals, we have some other goals too. All of those are important to all of us. Um, our students having choice and agency is really important because that's how they become, um, you know, really uh, contributing members of our society. So I think these goals are important. But I want, when we're talking about goals, I want to make sure we're always talking about sort of all the goals that we set because I think all of those are important for how our students come out. And I think the last thing is just to think about thinking about the asset language. Our kids have learned a lot in the last two years that is not captured in this report at all, right? And they have learned how to persevere. They've learned how to be resilient. They've learned how to go with the flow. They've learned how to learn, you know, on computers and stuff. And some of that, you know, some of that is captured. But I think um, it's okay here to think about all the hard questions. And when we talk to our students, we also have to say, you're doing a heck of a job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're really proud of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Good point. Good. Further, further, further questions on this academic report? I think we're ready to move on. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was very articulate, and I appreciate it. Uh, business manager, Tara, are you awake? Sorry, that's a silly uh -oh. question. I don't see her. I think she left to Oh, no, thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Great, we'll jump over that. Uh, policy committee. Yeah, all flags, right. Flags, flags, flags. Yeah. yeah, so we, we had a discussion uh, during that. Um, we tabled it. We are waiting to have a conversation with the lawyer um, regarding it because what we had discussed basically, you know, is it something that we want to go through with? Do we, you know, do we, you know, not even, you know, have it just allow the, the, the U.S. flag and the Vermont State flag. So that's something that other uh, boards were also discussing as well as us. Um, and so I think we 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 do see the value and the need to make sure that the kids are their voices are heard um, and that they can express themselves. So we did agree that if we go that route and say no, that we should also have um, something implemented that does allow them to, whether it be a wall in the school, outside the school or something, same, same concept, they can hang a flag, banner, or something like that. Um, so, so essentially do the same, same process 
but just for that, our flagpoles are our flagpoles. Like, you know, there were, like I had mentioned, some schools only have one flagpole. Mm -hmm. So how, it's not even going to be relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, so how do you tell one school, oh, well, we don't have a flagpole for you, but in another school you do. Mm -hmm. So we, we want to talk to the lawyer though, and also just discuss the policy that we have written up so far. And, just see, like, you know, are we, we just feel that there's just so much room for conflicts to, to arise. And as a board, we don't need to, it doesn't need to be our focus. Oh, great. So, yeah, that's where we're at. We trust you to do a good job. Look forward to hearing. Any, oh, Robert? Well, it's certainly blown up in the face of a joining um, a supervisor union um, on the horizon problems with trans. Trans kids. Is that going to be a, a future discussion for policy committee? Trans policy. I think that's a good question. Certainly, Randolph has died, has done it well, it's been forced to dive right into it. Good yeah. question. So, if, if you could bring that up, I will, of course. I think that's a really good point. Okay. Um, good. Anything for the policy committee? We do have a Standing, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, if I can no, just say no, this, no. that the SU it does have a policy that was adopted by the SU and this board on prevention of harassment, hazing, and bullying of students. So that, that could be um, one thing that's in existence that uh, we would provide as guidance. So, of course, um, there was the argument, that was the one of the arguments that was on the policy committee against the anti race. What was it called? What's our policy? Anti-racism yeah. policy? Yeah. Um, was that we already have, you aren't allowed to badger, why do we need one specifically for this group? And I think that would, and I don't remember the argument for that, but I think that would say that there is specific issues. Here with that. But there's also more, say, trans policy than just oh just absolutely the one i just mentioned was um, what you know how there's a whole lot yeah, 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 more yeah. to it than just that's, that's c10 yeah, but yeah. on uh c28 we have adopted yeah. both at the su and our yeah. district policy a policy called transgender and gender non-conforming students so i think so we need to so robert we if we um, yeah. all we ask can tap the list of policies on the SU website and it's the one that you were particularly interested in that is ours is would be called C code uh, C28. So maybe we should review that before I well, go I, I was just about, well, I was you know, just about to go through the full board uh, update and, and one of the board just to say that the board retreat um, one of our board goals was to review all our policies mm -hmm. and to see if which ones need updating. So that is so that is a goal of the of the SU board. Why don't we make an effort to review one per meeting? I think that's a great idea. And why don't you start with C twenty eight and see if it seems adequate? Bill, that um, condensed spreadsheet that you have. Did you, did, did you print that out somewhere, or did you create that yourself? I created it because <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you want to share you know, my, my mind. Is, uh, you are just my mind is like a sieve. I can't remember. Uh, are you willing? Are you willing to share that? Oh, absolutely. Because I think that would be wonderful. I think the yeah. last thing about like, like, like having you, you can just well, make a just, copy of your binder. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are talking about no, 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 no. Actually, uh, uh, setting up a mentor program, but we all need to. Even if we've been here a while, or even if we're ancient in age. So, um, no, and I love the idea about if we do a small yeah. increment. Yeah, yeah. just do um, one. Every and, it, and it's an educational thing, and not as well as a review thing, because I think a yeah. lot of us. I mean, sometimes it might just be as simple as reading it together. And okay. Just a little and saying, yes, that's great. Yeah. Because that's, that's the only guy that we're allowed to get to move on. Okay, okay, so that's our homework assignment, Mr. Chairman, as we read uh, all the CEC 28. No, no, no. That's the, the policy committees. Uh, but should we? Yes. No, I think we, we, we should review okay. one per meeting. You were talking about one. So uh, once a month, we review a policy. And, yeah. Uh, no, what do you want to get out of your meetings here? 
Just curious. Peter? Yeah. Can I? No, no, no. We can, we, we, we're, we're assigned between <laughs> now and the next. We're assigned between now and our next board meeting. Next. Yeah, we're assigned between now and our next board meeting to read C28. And if there, if we have anything to discuss about it or, yeah. you know, want to suggest to the policy committee, hey, we'd like you to take this back and review it. Sure. We have some concerns. No, that I think would be the appropriate steps because we don't change policy. We no, 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 no. I, the policy I, I think it's actually a really, really good I think, idea. I think just need to read it before I go into that. Correct, but we wouldn't really yeah. discuss a lot of it here. Yeah, no, no, we would no, more yeah. say, yes, this needs to be reviewed. Yeah. These are my opinions. Um, yeah. that up, sure. yeah. So I'm going to yeah. jump right in. I realize one thing I should do is I should send you all the SU board goals. Um, and then um, I worked on them. Uh, yeah, that's right, with Andrew um, from the high school. Uh, and you should all know what they are. Uh, we had a really good retreat, by the way. Um, it actually turned out to be, it wasn't, you know, you want to retreat with the SU board of, you know, everybody who's an alternate or whatever, but it, I thought it was a very good meeting anyway. It ended up being, Similar to ours in the sense that people got talking, but we um, we did set some goals. But one of the big things we went for was this idea of a mentor program, and that you would that any new arriving or new board member arriving anywhere in the district would be assigned a mentor, um, for, well, most likely not from their board, but from another board in the school in the SU. So that someone who they would possibly talk to before a meeting to talk about what is the Policies. What are the things? What are the what are the protocols? And um, but this is this is all that's all hypothetical. What we want tonight is volunteer um, who will be on the committee to create this mentoring program and create this how it, how it happens and what it does things like that. I think it's an interesting concept. I think that I mean the learning curve to be on the board is like years. It oh, takes yeah, years to yeah. figure out what you're supposed to be doing sitting here. <laughs> you know? mm. So um, yeah. I think it's a great idea. I am not volunteering at this at this <laughs> moment. <laughs> well, I am. I am looking at you. Could you could you think about being on a mentoring committee? It sounds like something would be up your alley. Well, I just want to don't, 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 don't interrupt when he's about to make a commitment. <laughs> no, but I wanted to, I wanted to allow Robert to make a commitment, not feel guilty because he's our, along with Patrick, our front lines on building and and, uh, sure. and the sure, whole sure, sure, sure. capital program. He can say that in the high school, school and everything else. So this guy's been putting in a lot of time as is no, 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 my no. colleague to the left. So given that, I will definitely think about it uh, when you need an answer. Uh, well, I'm supposed to give it to him, you know, after the board meeting. So, <laughs> how, about, how about 20 minutes? <laughs> I'll talk to you in 20 minutes. I mean, I, I, the one thing I will say about it is I don't think of it as an ongoing committee. I think of right. it as a setup committee and something that you come up with a, a, a presentation and then basically the board takes it over from there. Mm -hmm. So, that it's not something I, I don't think it's something you're going to be. Mentoring through the thing, it's going to be no. Give us a give us a the guidelines. Give us the guidelines, mm -hmm. and then we will institute. Probably the board chairmen will be in, instituting mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and we'll have a pool of people who want to do it, and then I will pull you know Stacy from Granville when whoever comes in, mm -hmm. you know Carrie McDonald comes in if that's it, the way it is, something like that. Yeah, my hesitation is is whether my skill set is is. Appropriate for that, as opposed to let's say build, you know, being on buildings and, and capital improvements, uh, I have a lot more experience on that. But the other is in an area where organizational. Oh wait a second, Justine. Oh, <laughs> well, there's such an advantage to a point. I knew, I knew you. I was like, I'm next. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I think I think I would be good at this. It, I I don't think. I'm a little hesitant just because I still feel new, but I think that might be helpful because I think exactly right because you could actually be asking the questions. You yeah, may not want the answer. You could just be like, "I would like to know this. Yeah. And this should be part yeah. of the." Yeah. Well, I can see both sides. Oh, I don't know, but I have. I also had to go through it recently. So, oh, am I writing your name down? Sure. Thank you, Justine. Good job. <laughs> Robert Barrett, thanks as well.
<laughs> Thank you, Robert. I'm being our, our thing. Okay, I'm, I'm, that's basically what we have to do. So okay. um, I will send you uh, the report. If you get a chance, read the, if you have a chance, read the minutes of that treat. I thought it was a, a very interesting. Well, one of, if I may just say one topic that came up that I thought was really interesting was how do we make our middle school Bethel and our high school South Royalton a viable option for every person leaving right. our elementary <laughs> programs, even though it's uh, school choice, you're saying. Yeah, even if you don't have school choice. Yeah, that, that yeah, why shouldn't our flagship, as Bill mm -hmm. likes to say, yeah, yeah. why it should be at least a consideration? Well, I think ask, you know, ask parents. Yeah, well, that's it. You know, like, ask me, he's not, you know, not here, but like, why did we, what made our choice for what we decided to choose? Yep. And, you know, maybe that is something that could not be addressed at all with with it, or maybe it is yep. something. Well, like, there's certainly, an, an Andrew spoke to this, um, and I'm sorry, I'm not remembering his last name, but he's the board uh, chairman, I think, of the yes, yes. WR UD. Thank you. Um, I get confused on that one. But he said they are actively looking to um, promote yeah. their school, that that is part of their goals right now is to do that. Um, oh, you're nodding your head too. You remember that? Yeah. Okay, um, okay. good. Jones, yeah. Uh, we are 15 minutes. That's all right. That's it. Right. 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 Uh, do we need to wait for him to come back? Is EEI? Here, Eric. Here. Yeah. Oh, Eric. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good, good. Yeah, let's keep this efficient and to the point. And we need we'll, Jamie here for. Do we need? Do we need Jamie here for this? No, I don't think so. Nope. Great. Great. I'm going to be super quick and super efficient for everybody here because we're not voting on anything today. So. Yeah, what's new? So what's new? Hold on one second. Um, I'm just trying to share my screen. Can I share my screen? Is that is that an option here? You should be able to now. It's disabled by default. All right. All right. Well, a tab. Let me do that. Oh. You need to get up here. Yeah. Roll up and walk around. Yeah. Is that an old scheme? Oh, yeah. He threw his back out yesterday. Oh. Yeah, we also do it these days. Jump and leap and do all crazy things on the as far as I remember. Uh, I don't regret it, but I, I regret it. <laughs> okay. So, so just for updates for everybody, um, I've been spending a lot of time in Rochester and Stockbridge. Um, I'm going to be back there again tomorrow. Um, overall, everything's shaking out pretty well. Um, we've been submitting concept approvals to the state for their ESSER applications, which went in, I think a week ago or so. Um, we we're getting subcontractor pricing back right now. We have drawings that are about at 95%. Um, and overall, I, I feel really confident that when you guys meet again in December, um, I will have all of the numbers laid out, but so far everything I'm seeing coming back so far is looking good. So all of these preliminary numbers that I shared with you guys um, a couple months ago are starting to come to fruition. Um, some numbers are up, some numbers are down a little bit. Um, one of the big things that we've seen change in the last few months is rising interest rates. So um, you'll see down here at the bottom um, for Rochester Elementary School, I'm still looking at a total budget of 1.221 million. Um, I feel good about that number. I think overall there might be some opportunities to actually that number to lower just a little bit, um, maybe not a whole lot, but maybe by 10 or 15,000. Um, and I should have kind of all those final numbers for us uh, for next uh, next month's meeting. Still looking at getting the grants from the state of Vermont for the wood chip boiler um, and actually probably getting some increased rebates from Efficiency Vermont as well. Um, I'm still showing the, the same rebates we had before but I'm hoping that number is gonna go up a little bit. And I'm actually in discussions with them right now to see if they can contribute a little bit more money. Eric? Yes. Quick, quick question, can you just tell us uh, how do uh, rising interest rates affect the overall, just because uh, I don't know this kind of thing. Yeah, so it's right down here. So that's how, so before we were looking at 
Um, Rochester Stockbridge responsibility of around 572,000. So the reason why interest rates affect your project is because we use the energy savings to pay for a lease for the equipment. So um, obviously when lease terms go up, interest rates rise, you don't get as much capital upfront money for it. But it's really not that bad because we were really figuring at roughly like a three and a um, 3.75 interest rate before, which on 40,000 in a year of energy savings was getting you about 450,000 um, of capital funds, um, which still leaves the district responsibility of 122,000. Um, now with the rising interest rates at four and a half percent, that int- that district responsibility jumps up to 143,000. So right. it, it affects it by about twenty thousand um, dollars in that initial upfront cost. Um, so I'm sharing this information with Efficiency Vermont, and um, I'm trying to see if they can help close that gap to keep these projects viable. And at the same time, um, so one of the things at Rochester that's coming up is this asbestos abatement right here, this allowance. Um, that $50,000 actually is coming in pretty accurate. I'm meeting with another contractor over there um, later this week um, to look at the abatement. But where you guys have asbestos is um, some of your original steam piping in your building still has the insulation that is considered hot. It comes up at the elbow joints. So in your guys' gymnasium, um, I know you guys are at Rochester right now, but you'll see where the steam piping picks up some wall-mounted radiation. Um, and if you look closely enough, you can actually see um, from the wall of the building as it goes out into the gym, there's kind of two different types of insulation. About 20 feet into the gym where that pipe enters into the space, you'll see that insulation change. And it goes from a fiberglass insulation to this kind of corrugated um insulation and that corrugation along with the mudded joints is what has come up hot in your guys facility so um in the other area that's hot is if you go into your boiler room and you take a look up at the ceiling um they have this asbestos ceiling um that's over the original ceiling um asbestos was really good as a flame retardant which is why you really see a lot of the boiler rooms are kind of covered in asbestos including the doors. So um, one of the things that I'll be bringing to you guys next time is that there's there's a certain amount of this asbestos that we don't necessarily have to remove under this project. Um, it could stay there and we could still get our work done um, the way that we wanted it to. But the question goes, you know, I, w- I just want to bring all the information back to you guys and let you make that decision if that's something that you want us to abate or if that's something that you guys want to push down the road and take care of it at another time. Um, So that is something that I'm looking more into right now. When would we make that decision? Would that be whenever we do the final budget or is that in the process of the construction? Um, I would like that decision to be made for next month. So when I come back to you guys next month, I'm gonna give you guys essentially, this is your base amount that gets you away from steam, gets you your guys new hydronic system, and then I'm going to have a handful of ads in the project, like ad alternates. And one of them is going to be like remove boiler room ceiling asbestos, which is it's probably about $10,000 worth of abatement. Um, then there's you guys have this mechanical room. If you first walk into the school off to your right, you guys have your steam heat exchanger in there. There's quite a bit of pipe in there that I need to abate. It's like it's not a question. I need that space to be able to connect up my my hot water lines. So that abatement is gonna be part of the base bid because I just can't get around it with um, and complete the project at the same time. Um, and then the same thing with the gym. So I'm gonna to try to break it up in as many ways as possible and let you guys make the decision that you feel is in your best interest at the end of the day. So overall, um, we're in the process right now of finalizing the location of the pro- underground propane tanks, Um, which we're looking into potentially maybe putting it in the easement land. If that doesn't work, it might go on the backside of the gymnasium. So those that's in development right now, that's going to be required for state of Vermont permitting. Um, We're about 95% complete on the mechanical and electrical designs of the project. Those are out to bid. We're getting pricing right now. 
Um, and then we're just kind of waiting on this last civil piece. Um, and then my goal is to come back to you guys in December and say, this is where all the numbers came in at. This is what my total cost is. I feel confident that I'm going to be able at the cost that's presented here or hopefully just below it. Um, at that point, I'll have all the final rebates and grants solidified with Efficiency Vermont. Um, you know, everything I tell them that the job is on the on the cusp of going or not, um, any money that they can throw in helps the project. So we're just going to continue with that narrative. Um, and then we still have the ESSER contributions, which, like I said, concept approval has been submitted to the state. Um, we expect to do project approval here very shortly once we have final permit set drawings. Um, and then we're back to that responsibility of what Rochester and Stockbridge has to bring to the table, um, which hopefully will be covered by um, a lease agreement um, towards the energy savings. So right now, uh, like I said, before we were looking at district responsibility of around 122,000 um, with the current numbers and not changing efficiency Vermont's rebates, um, we're looking at now around 143,000, which is specific to the, the um, interest rate change. Um, but I am working to close that gap um, and then provide you guys more options so you guys can make a decision um, of what, how much capital funds you really wanna dip into at the end of the day. So that is Rochester Elementary School. Does anybody have any questions about Rochester? Yeah, Bill. Yeah, Eric, um, you said coming, this is very helpful and update in the specificity and, uh, and also just all the hurdles that you're going through to pull this thing off. Uh, and I appreciate your optimism because it's, uh, it's nice uh, in this day and age. Um, I guess my request to the chairman is that before you meet with our full board in December, that you, our uh, capital planning and uh, high school uh, team uh, have a chance to meet with you and um, listen to and read all your material and ask all the questions they need to do before our meeting just December, I'm not an expert in any of this. So I'm going to be leaning on, and the people I'm going to be leaning on, I don't want to be fully briefed uh, before our December meeting. So is that going to be something that you can set, we can set up together? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm anyway. more than happy. And, and if it want, if you guys want to do it on site and we can walk the job and I can literally point to you guys and say, this is how I expect the pipe to be run. This is what's going to be exposed. This is what the cover material is going to be. That, that I honestly, that's the best way to go, just so that there's no surprises at the end of the day of what that product I'm giving you um, is going to look like. So, well, the questions I had, I can steer towards these guys that, to ask because they are specific to the product. So, cool. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Talk Stockbridge. So, let me jump into Stockbridge. Oh, so Stockbridge, um, same thing, um, looking at updating all the classroom ventilation. So um, right now you guys have two units that sit up in your kind of mezzanine area um, in your new addition above the kitchen. Um, one of the units is dedicated to the gym. Um, the other unit is a direct outside air unit that feeds makeup air to all of your classrooms. Um, so what you guys do now is you guys essentially bring in 100% outside air through this gas-fired air handling unit. Um, this air handling unit uh, burns propane, heats up the, the air, and then supplies fresh air to each one of your classrooms. Um, it's about, I'm guessing the unit's 30 plus years old. Um, it works on a digital time clock. It's had lots of issues. The proposal under this project is to eliminate that unit up in the attic we would go with a new rooftop mounted unit um, that would be located um, right in your almost, uh, if you guys are familiar with the school, you walk straight into the school, it's your front lobby. There's a little corridor that you stand in the middle and you can see four of your classrooms in the front principal's office. The unit would sit essentially right in that corridor. This project would remove the ceiling in that corridor space. Um, and then we would put the new unit on the roof. We would provide new ductwork to each one of the classrooms. Um, and then we would install a new drop ceiling um, in that space. Um, so in this case, you guys would be picking up energy recovery that you never had before. 
Um, in that point, we would integrate the web-based controls. So this is an internet-based control system that would pull in your guys' new hydronic system that you did a couple of years. And it also integrate your new energy recovery unit. Um, so essentially everything but your gymnasium at that point would be on this web-based control system. Um, the only, and even the gymnasium, I, I would probably put a new thermostat in there. Um, the only thing is I just don't want to put controls into another unit that's 25, 30 plus years old. So um, you guys just wouldn't necessarily have control of the gym unit, but it'd give you full web-based control of all the remaining system. Um, this project um, also had a lighting update with it. Um, so total cost of 306,000. Um, Agency of Education had an indoor air quality grant that was awarded to Stockbridge of um, temporary or preliminary award of 200,000. Um, we're anticipating that money to come through. Um, you're also going to see some efficiency Vermont rebates. So after um, taking into account uh, the grants and the rebates um, through the AOE in efficiency Vermont, that's left uh, leaves you guys with responsibility of approximately 81,000. Um, White River Valley ESSER contribution of 35,000, um, leaving your guys' responsibility of 46,000. Um, you're looking at roughly $7,800 a year in energy savings, and these are straight utility costs. It doesn't include any maintenance expense. This is strictly what you pay for your utility expense. So on a 10-year, oh, this is our old one. So before we were figuring on a 10-year lease at 3.75, um, which was running you guys roughly $5,600 a year um, in lease expense with um, guaranteed savings of 7,800. With the revised um, interest rate of four and a half percent, we can still meet these so that they're they're net zero um, to the school. But you're looking at what was fifty six hundred a year now jumps to fifty eight hundred a year on a ten year four and a half percent note. Um, and then I wanted to just show this because we did a fifteen year at Rochester, um, so at um, Stockbridge you'd be looking at forty three hundred a year. Um, for a net savings of roughly $3,500. So in both cases, um, Stockbridge, you can see that um, where you have that uh, zero impact to the school district. Um, Rochester, I'm still working on it. Um, I'm hoping to have some different alternates to hopefully get these two numbers lower while not necessarily affecting the, the, the student um, learning experience in there as well. And, I'm, and if that I'm happy to discuss that more in a direct facilities committee um, if that's something you guys want to do on site on a later date. So overall, um, I feel I feel good about where things are coming in. Um, it isn't easy, to be honest with you. Um, like anything, uh, we we get some pushback from the AOE. There's hoops to jump through, like with collecting any type of government money. They don't just hand it out. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, different people that we need to satisfy and a lot of different questions that we need answers to, but I feel like we're progressing on those things and they're moving forward in the right direction. Um, if it was easy, anybody would do it. Um, it's not so, but I do feel good about it. And I think overall, um, you know, I, I do feel confident that come back in December, um, I will have final numbers for you guys and hopefully a motion for you guys to be able to move forward so we can order equipment and then, um, Ideally, April break, 2023, um, we're in there starting some work. And if all goes well, um, doing some underground prior to school, getting out this year, getting propane tanks in, and anything we can do to help expedite that schedule, because it's going to be another busy summer, 2023, um, to make sure these projects go well and you guys have heat um, starting October 1st of 2023. Okay. So. okay. Good. Any we're questions? Right. Thank you. I think we're good. Hey, thank you so much, yeah. Eric. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. And, thank you, guys. Uh, talk to you soon. Yeah. Eric, just a quick question. Will yeah. you talk to the committee? Who's going to talk to, who's going to make this happen, this committee yeah. meeting? Yeah, I put an email out like I did last Okay, time. good. And thank you. Schedule. Just make sure that works. Yeah, I, I just wanted to be on site. And ideally, during the day, I promise next meeting, I will be in person for the December meeting. Um, but if we can find an opportunity to meet on site um, somewhere in those hours between like 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., um, that would be awesome. And I'd be happy to 
run through the whole project with you guys and point everything out and lay everything out for you. Excellent. Thank you. Eric. All right, guys. Good luck with the rest of your meeting. Thank you. Draft number two of student support budget 2324. Do you want to hit Tara's report? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's back. Oh, yeah. She's back. Yes. Let's jump back to business manager. Good evening, Tara. How are you? Good evening, everyone. So you have my business manager's report. It just goes over all of the due dates that are happening right now in the business office. November is a very busy reporting month for us. Um, a lot of our first quarter reports are due. Um, plus, with all the new federal guidelines, we have a lot of our reports due on the federal emergency funding into the agency. So that's primarily what it shows in my report. Um, lastly, on the discussion items, we are still missing a substantial amount of residency verification forms. So we have sent out here from the business office a letter from me and uh, a copy of the forms requesting that they get signed and returned to us as soon as possible so that we can make sure tuition is paid in a timely manner. So that's my report. If there's any questions there. Ready? No. I think let's move right on and thank you. Now we're going to draft number two of student support budget 2324. So the only change on the student support draft two, you'll see on my notes there, um, we received from VHI, which is our health insurance and dental insurance carrier. Uh, that we got their requested uh, tax or their requested insurance rates that they sent in to the Department of Financial Regulations. So I have updated the budgets to reflect that request. So that's the only change that's happened on the student support draft two. Yeah, it's a $26,000 increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's not, it is what it is. It is that's it is. that's yeah. one of those things we, yeah. we just breathe in. But it's a, it's a significant increase. Yeah, it, yeah. Is. it is a very substantial increase. That's final. I mean, that's final. That's well, we're waiting on... Yeah, not terrible. final. Okay. So this is what they have requested for rates for the Department of Financial Regulations to review. DFR can either accept those rates or reject those rates, but we won't know that until probably January, which is getting late in the game for budgets. So we go in with what they project and have requested. Where, where are we? I subtracted it and I found the difference. So what it is, what it is, is last, last month I have a copy of what oh, was okay. given to us gotcha. last month oh. and it was 115. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, oh, so, so good. good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> so, Amazing. You're rather than 141. Plus? It's plus. Like, what? 115 was compared to what? Oh, uh, to the 141. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. It's the, it's about the yeah, that's the house. That's yeah. what she's explaining now. Sure, yeah. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. You. No, no, we just um, looking for it. But that's good to know, and I think that's what we have to do is budget for it, and because it could, it's the, kind of a worst case scenario, yeah. but it could, could be a potential yeah. scenario too. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the second half is your first draft of your general education. You can see from the notes, the changes to this in comparison to the current fiscal year is that there's an increase in the outdoor education from 0.4 FTE to 0.8. And there okay. is also- a sorry. Okay, I just want to say, are there any uh, staff still in the building? I don't know. Okay, can we just close the door? While you're talking to I mean, it's public. Just so, oh, I guess it's just so the board knows. <laughs> I guess that's true. I just, uh, just so the board knows, this is to better equate to the FTE that's currently happening within this position. So this is a 1.0. We have a 1.0 teacher that does outdoor ed and pathways. This is still a 1.0 teacher that would do outdoor ed pathways. It's just this budget better communicates the actual FTE percentages that are happening in those areas. So the contract doesn't change. You currently have a 1.0 outdoor slash pathway teacher 
we would stay with a 1.0 outdoor ed slash pathway teacher. And as I understand, she the outdoor ed was initially funded by ESSER funds. Yeah, last year. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was just saying. So where is this the year we're taking it into putting it into our budget? Well, there was where you're not going to see a huge jump in the budget because we've hired some new staffing as well. So why you're not seeing your salary lines all of a sudden jump up is that we've had some folks who have left us who were at the higher part of the salary schedule yes. versus um, what we've currently hired. Mm -hmm. And so that position is gonna be completely locally funded and you're not seeing it have an impact on your budget. Gotcha. So can you speak- And the other thing that's in the budget still in general ed is you currently have a position right now that's not filled here in Rochester. Yes. If you remember, right, we had yeah. to reconfigure how we were teaching because we couldn't find that teacher. It was a late resignation. Yeah. That position remains in this budget with the yeah. expectation that we'll fill it. Yeah. Because I talked to those two teachers who are taking on that, and it's a lot of work. Yeah. And they're doing a really great job, but it's a lot of work. And so I hope we can find that. So you were just talking about the outdoor ed and pathways, and um, I'm That's not sure what pathways is, yep. and what does that reduction mean? I would say to you, I don't, it's not a reduction. Okay. What you're seeing here is what's currently What's happening. currently, okay. Yeah. So, so what is pathways? So the pathways program at the elementary school yeah. is to help support our teachers with the implementation of a capstone project. Okay. And if you, yep. if you remember in those SUI goals, it is that we would have a capstone slash passion project, however you want to title it, at the end of your the sixth grade for Rochester Stockbridge, so that all students would engage in an authentic learning experience that would have some type of celebration of learning that would be public, that would be focused on their passion. Nice. Okay. A senior project. So yeah, some schools call it a senior project. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And so there's pieces of that underway in our elementary schools. We are working toward this idea and concept that all students will have the opportunity to engage okay. in that type of learning and demonstration of learning. Okay. So how does the pathways money get spent? Is it going to different teachers? It would be going toward this teacher spending a day a week. A supporting that work, what yeah. I just described. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Question around that: <clears throat> Will that involve mentors from the community? Yeah, ideally. Yeah. I mean, I think how it's going to look in each building could be different, right? Yeah. And that's part of what this investment is into is designing it. Yeah. And so we're at different levels of it across the SU at the elementary level right now, as far as students engaging in passion projects. We had some. Um, I would say more momentum than one district and the teachers out right now um, due to medical reasons. So I feel like we've lost a little more right, right, there. Okay. But um, yes, that's the idea. And ideally they would have mentors. Mm -hmm. um, and what we've done is if you look at my SU board reports, we are currently, we've invested some of our community school grant in a platform through Big Picture School right. to um, create a uh, database that's nationwide, but also local, mm -hmm. of folks who are interested in serving, excuse me, as mentors for kids. I was just going to ask, that was my next question. Yeah, so that we are building the infrastructure now so that's easily accessible for our teachers Yeah. Um, to be able to look and see, I have a student who's interested in X, and this database then allows yeah. us to access folks both locally, statewide, but then nationally, who are already background checked, vetted, and willing to support our kids. That's, That's cool. great. Yeah. I like that mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. yeah. That provides a lot of opportunities. And we do have uh, pathway oh, folks yeah. in this, this Pathways team has its own professional learning collaborative now, too. We have folks that are either doing work based learning or uh, teaching Pathways now in all of our districts other than two. Yeah, sort of all the districts that have um, full middle schools, like the, right, are kind of our, um, and they are, you can think about sort of this work, and Jamie talked about it earlier about sort of starting at the high school and doing some work. So they're really thinking about those flexible pathways sort of from sixth grade through 12th grade. 
and knowing that right, our goal is to get this really strong in elementary schools. What are we learning at that age group? What are kids coming in with as their skills? What do we want to make sure that our elementary kids have, you know, so that they're prepared to access pathways um, when they get into those upper grades as well. And so I, we think sort of similarly how we did the flexible pathways um, professional learning group this year, as we move towards this goal for next year, having elementary folks who are engaged in capstones do some of that work across together. In most of our school, I guess in all of our elementary schools, no one has it as a 1.0 job, flexible pathways. It's just it's not in our elementary. So we, it's just a lot of people are doing other pieces of it. And so I think that that's what we're just trying to um, sort of stage these things out. So we're not asking any one person to be in 10 places at one time. Um, but I think we'll, we'll be in a good place in the next year to start bringing those folks together to share what's working in um, different districts. Amy. Yeah, I don't know if we want to, if Tara has more to present or if we should continue asking questions. I noticed that on the bottom it says increased art from 0.2 to 0.4 and increased world language from 0.2 to 0.4. But uh, if you go across to the FTE on both the foreign language and the art, they're still at 0.2. Those are typos because if you look, is the amounts is the money right? The money's right. So <laughs> okay. that, those yeah, sorry, right. I updated it one place, didn't in the other. Okay, that's that's fine. I just want to. You know. Yeah, because I, I was I was going to my room now. So okay. Increase in art is, is is double from point two to point two. To point four. four. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, the number that you know you always talk about that the budget is a statement um, that I and I'm glad it's increased to point four, but I do see you know point four art point eight um, PE, <laughs> and that, that's a statement. Yeah, you know that running around is very important, but I believe we've we've made a very clear statement in this board and our retreat and other places that art and is a is a big deal for us. And so this is the time to right. um, yeah the um, I would tell you why I think point eight p is no, why it is in the budget. No, it's it's because of the school quality standards. Yeah, no, no, no. So, I, I just. So what does that you say? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the school quality standards state that students need to have PE twice a week, gotcha. where that is not specified in mm -hmm. performing or visual arts. So I just wanted to make sure. No, I understand that. It's just, again, it's the first time I've ever, ever thought of it. Mm -hmm. Talk about mentoring, and I've been in this board 17 years now, um, or 18 or is it 20? I don't remember. Um, <laughs> but the idea that you look at this number now, of course, it's not presented as neatly as this in our budget. In fact, is this is a statement. And I just, um, and it, you know, I, I, I don't know, what am I saying? I don't know, Justine, what am I saying? We want our, we want our, we want our, we want, I, think, I mean, yeah, I, say, I think you're saying it. I think it makes sense. Um, we, we, it is a statement, but um, I wasn't surprised to hear what Jamie's response was. No, it's it's, it's it's with the ratio. Um, do and do we want you know 0.6 music? Of course, we can't find a music teacher, so the point is sort of you know um, null and void a little bit. Um, but this is the time right now. Is literally the time to say, what do we want for art? What do we want for performing arts, visual arts? music in our schools. This is the time to say. Well, and, and the issue we have as administration, and what I think Lindy would say to you, is and what don't we teach? I think that's where we struggle right now. Right. Well, but we've already talked about this. We, we encourage integration. Yep, absolutely. And, and, that, and that you look for a teacher, an art teacher, a music teacher, whoever, who is an integrationist. Um, I'm certainly well, not mind that. I mean, we we try to be creative about it too, and you know, we already have an after-school program. Is there any way to incorporate the arts into after-school program? That we can, but I, I, you know, that's not. I mean, I know they're already holding art. Oh, Justine, what? I don't think that would would fall into any sort of. Uh, we can integrate it, but not every kid goes to after school. It's or not that's not um it i guess it's it's um you know there are only so many things we control we can we can say we want 0.6 art we can say we want 
full time music, which maybe will get us a teacher because it's a full time job as opposed to just a point six job where they've got to share it with something else. I mean, these are the kind of statements that we can make at this point. And yes, the administration has to figure out scheduling, but that is, you know, then we ask them to be creative about it. And uh, how, how can literacy be taught? I mean, Amy Brown is constantly talking about how you can mix how you teach a core subject. Right. You know, that it doesn't just have to be in the classroom with a book. And I don't know what you feel about that statement. Uh, I think integration is great, right? Like that, the world is up, is set up to be integrated. Uh, I think when we think about the school day, that the more you try to integrate, the more time you have to have, the more time you need to have to plan that to do it well. Mm -hmm. And so, trying to trying to find the time when you've got sort of not, um, you know, not in very large staff, um, kids got to be somewhere in order to free up two teachers to have the same time to plan together. So those are the things around the, the scheduling that we just had, you know, to figure out. Arts director, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I mean, we talked about that. Um, we talked about it in our retreat. This is I'm just remembering this. We talked about the idea of hiring somebody who would be the coordinator, and maybe it was more of the community coordinator. But it was. But the, it's it, also uh, integration. Yeah, I think it's, it's the I think idea that they see that word. these way, and that they, you know, then they, you know, they they can sit with the teacher, so the teacher doesn't have to do all the legwork. They're doing some of the legwork. Mm -hmm. Of communication. Um, uh, Amy, go ahead. Well, looking at, um, we have point four for art, um, we have point four for library and media. Um, so, is media also kind of like graphic design art type stuff, or what is media? Um, does that fall into that arts category at all? Um, and what Could does it? point four look like? Is that that's one day in the, that's one class in the library? Um, and so art is one class, and just kind of, what does it really actually look like? It's one class. Yes, yeah, one class. Uh, every yeah. every grade, one class. So it's a one day in, in um, Stockbridge, one day in Rochester. And what is the media part of it? Well, you know, I think as we look at it. What's that? This is not a shared position between the two buildings. No, the library is not. No, it's still one day in each building. Right. Yeah. 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 So the, when I think about library, I think what we should be doing is, is looking at how we teach students to use the library mm -hmm. as a tool, right? Yes, so I think absolutely. integration, I think library media like is absolutely integrated if it's working well. It's not the one-off, let's go in and have the read aloud and just check out books. Like I really want it to be, especially in those upper elementary grades, absolutely. that teachers are pushing into the library yeah to do research yep. Yep. to help support informational writing. As we think about expanding our capstone project, how is the library and team teaching with yep. our humanities, our upper level ELA slash social studies teachers, yes. we call it humanities in certain places, yep. around helping support that capstone project. Um, you know, I think ideally at some point, like I would love to have all of our, our upper elementary students engage in some type of rigorous research project mm -hmm. that really becomes their capstone project, right? And there's a reading and writing task that's in alignment around that authentic assessment. The librarian's gonna have to play a, right. a piece to that too. And so that that's the vision for library media. Um, and I think that we're working on that vision across our schools. It's it, the library media specialist position has been changing, I think, across the nation and certainly in our state now for some time. I think there are places where what I'm describing is where we're at. I think there's places where there's a lot of growth we still need to be in there. So going back to PE and that's at a point eight. So I have just a question regarding that. So say like this winter, so point eight, I'm just making an assumption. So that's, an, that's two hours, right? An hour of PE, two days a week, so two hours? No. How does that? My, it's probably between 30 and 45 minutes. Okay. Session. So my question is, if we're doing the ski program, that would be PE? No. 
That doesn't count in place of it. No, not in school quality standards. Well, now, why is that just a question? Because, I mean, really? The, the PE the PE teachers lobbied the State Board of Education around ed quality standards to make physical education be twice a week for a healthy, physically fit person. Mm -hmm. um, well, I think if you want me to just be really candid. No, no, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Well, there, there's no logic. If you're gonna ski, and you know this, it helps you get in shape. And so a lot of PE is, 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 is just physical fitness and whether it's stretching or, or yoga or meditation, whatever case is, so that you can participate in exciting things like skiing without getting hurt. And so I think they kind of, they complement each other. I'd hate to see the one go. Um, well, I guess my other, my follow-up to that was, okay, well, if, if we're doing the ski program Friday mornings, you know, they're going to come back after around lunch, whatever, I already get the sense that it's not going to be a very productive afternoon in the classroom <laughs> after skiing all morning. Kids are going to be just not really focused, I think. Well, I also um, want to emphasize, so when I put the 2.2 versus the 0.8, it actually was saying nothing about PE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm not saying we should take 2. PE away. Um, That's not what I'm saying. Um, I'm actually, and now I'm actually going to, I think, I mean, look at how much emphasis we're putting on literacy. Mm -hmm. and, look, it's, oh, it's, and I have to say, it's been my big issue for many, many years that the library was not being well used as a, as a support to the literacy program in, in Rochester School, where it is in Stockbridge. It's one of the real divisions between these two schools. And I think we have a chance to rectify that now. And I'm wondering, is this a point uh, six? Library media point four. Is, do we need a point six? Do we need do we need more days? Um, with if this is a foundation, this is the place where the books are. This is where the no, kids can get excited. Uh -huh. My wife is a librarian. She would want me to push for this. Well, well. so, so I'm something saying, interesting. My wife and I were discussing are. recently that we both have fond memories of at Stockbridge when we were children, mm -hmm. and that was developing our own. Book, you know, creative writing and yeah. fictional writing. That whatever, be part of library. That's what I mean. You know, you're being artistic. You're you're you know drawing. You're also creating a story that goes with the drawing. Yeah. Um, I, I I put it out as a very serious proposal that we in, in, in look to our literary library it goes up at least to a point six, if not a point eight, and figure that and and come back with a, a numbers on that. You know, this is your time to tell us yeah. what you want. Well, that's it. That's why I'm so if you, out. As administrators, if you're telling us to increase FT, or is yeah. it just a straw agreement? I mean, how as, do we feel about that? As administrators, if you're telling us to increase FTEs, we're not going to tell you no. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, that's what it is. About what we're going to tell you is like the school day on. Uh, yeah. the classroom time, but when you're talking about a library, that's not a yes. no, no, that's that's kid walks in the eyes just a gl glow. Yeah. And it seems to be librarians can, can serve not only yeah. reading art, and writing, but art and just getting people excited. Yeah. Um, and, and, and as has been my point, as I say again, it's been my point for that literacy is such a big deal. The place of literacy is the library. You know, it's 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 where you want kids excited, and you walk into the Stockbridge Library, and it's a colorful, vibrant place with media all over the walls. And I want to be there. I want to be part of it, and that's what I want. So I, I am making the suggestion that we increase our library. As I've said before, I'm willing to raise school budgets to pay for things we want. So you would give us a point four two what point eight uh, one? What do you want? What, what? Well, well, right now, with the point library made a 0.4. I would go at least a 0.6. Okay. Well, let's let's ask staff to to uh, noogle that and see if that makes sense. Then I come back and say, is it better at 0.5 or 0.8? What are the cases? And here's the cost mm -hmm. and implications, right? Well, I mean, they they can't tell us now, now but because um, we still like we like the increase in art mm -hmm. from two to four, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like two to four. Music is if we can get a teacher, six we like. Um, but the library media, we definitely want to go up to a six. I want to make the caveat on the 
the art, and I'm, I'm proud my mom was an art reading teacher back in the day, but I don't want, if there's an X number of classroom hours, mm -hmm. and we have, we've ex expanded math and reading, and we know we've got huge challenges, um, we don't want to reduce the time on literacy and math because we, to spend more time on the library, and, just, and we can, we can do it without doing that. So with that caveat, I'd be curious whether or not we can expand art um, and music without um, taking away that classroom. That's the challenge I just said. I mean, you, and, you know, can bring art and we can, the media. Can, I'll support you all the way on this right now, but I don't want to have them taken away from reading and math. It's just, um, oof. Well, the world is, yeah, Justine, go ahead. Well, I think that goes back to what Pat was suggesting about finding a way to have someone facilitate the integration because we could have a an arts program that was in, intended to be in, integrated into the academics and that you could then beef up library literacy math with that concept it wouldn't necessarily be taking away from anything you would just add more arts but then with the themes connected to academics right yeah yeah let's see what you can do okay yeah I want to go. And you can offer know. things like music without having a uh, having it be a, a a licensed teacher necessarily. I mean, we don't. You have skiing. There's no license. That's not PE. Doesn't doesn't count toward PE, but it is movement. Outdoor education doesn't count toward, you know, PE either. Just yeah, just be careful of that thinking because we have a collective bargaining agreement and any licensed educator position is a bargain position within that CBA. Right. But if it doesn't get filled, what is the point? Well, if it doesn't get filled, then we can contract. But we should Yeah, well, that's contract. what I mean. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. Can we go back to what? student support? The top of the... Can you show that up again? Um, Parker. Draft um, two of student support. Draft two of student support, right? <clears throat> and this question is to Jamie and Anda, and we started the, the looking at the academic performance review in this fall, and we have huge challenges. I heard from you that you're not throwing in the towel in any way that you think you can come back in the second half or the uh, the third period, and we can make progress. And I also heard you say that uh, we, we're not out of the woods, but you still think we can meet those 2025 targets. And my question is, given the fact with the results of that we've saw, seen this this fall, do we have the manpower or the personal. technical power, the personal power? Where you, sorry, excuse me, and I withdraw that term. The person power um, to be able to make the the increases in performance of our, our students that we need here in Rochester. Um, I'm looking at an increase of a half of FTE for intervention and, and then one FTE for uh, uh, the PARAs. Sorry, Amy. Is that the interventionist we were told last week was for um, the current math uh, interventionist that is um, under ESSER and Title I funds, yeah, and we're pulling that into So that's not an increase, that's just a, a, a move so of the federal fund. funds from our funds. So yeah, but, but so it's that's, math, it's not. Okay, it's yeah, but, but, but that's not an increase. So uh, that's just to be able to sustain our level of effort. And my question is, is, is sustaining a level of effort going to be enough? And if not, um, help us, because I'm. if we're talking about art and we're talking about um, and music, which is dear to my heart, um, in more ways than one, um, we still need to be able to have our kids be able to read and write. So I'll jump in. I think so. Uh, help me here. I, I don't think you're going to intervene your way out of your test scores. And so what I mean by that <laughs> is intervention is not what's going to fix this. It's going to be universal instruction in the classroom for teachers. And so I, I actually think you also have a special educator that works across your two buildings, which isn't part of this, this budget either. So within your district, 
of having, you know, just about 125 students between your two schools. I could be off a little bit. That's back of the napkin math. Yeah. Um, it might be 130. And that's counting your pre Kers in your building. Mm -hmm. You have a full time literacy interventionist in this building. You've got a part time literacy interventionist that's also your librarian. Um, in your Stockbridge building, you have a full time math interventionist across both buildings and a special educator. So I have not heard from your faculty at this point in time or your principal that we don't have enough capacity to, to you know, serve our students. We do a lot by just filling the position that's empty. The, here. the, the universal instructor. Yeah, yeah the absolutely universal instructor in the classroom. We're, yeah. we're, we're getting so to a year without. A what I would say to you is it's going to be beefing up our universal instruction mm -hmm. that's going to address these concerns. I don't, I do not believe double, that interventionists remember are double dipping kids. We don't want to take them out of universal right. instruction yeah. just to get intervention, right? We want to double dip it so that they get literacy instruction twice in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so how do you fuck now? We're okay. So I'm telling you that it's, it's just improving our approach universally. That's going to do this. It's not going to be. So you're not going to throw different. money at it. It's not going to help necessarily. It's it's just it's not a, it's not as a, more people. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. there's certainly money we can. Yeah, yeah, you can always yeah. Yeah. I think the one way to sort of connect it back to the data report is to think about those graphs and think about the yellow. Right. Those are those are students who are you know if the distance might be a little bit different but are just missing the mark those are the kids that we are really going to capture with universal instruction and then you think about the sort of the red is you know that's where you know intervention might be most effective but you've got some really you know you got some pretty wide yellow bands and so it, that's where right that's where that's the work around is. <laughs> Yeah. So is that professional development? Is that so I have yeah. one of the key things yeah. I know you've really done a lot it's PD it's materials and I know this this is hard, right? But we are dealing with living be being creatures, right? Both as students and faculty. Yeah. And what I think it shows is the payoff in math has been significant. I believe we've gotten it right in regards to our our PD approach and the tool we selected. We know there are limitations to the work that Fountas and Pinnell can do, right? We invested in Fountas Pinnell, we train folks on Fountas and Pinnell. Many years ago. But there are limitations to what it can do. I think what you're starting to see is we have, we've identified what those limitations are around our foundational skills. And so that's where we are now saying we, we need to have a different approach to teaching those foundational skills. What I think you're seeing is, is that our data has flattened in many places in literacy because we've gotten to the place where we can get with Fountas and Pennell. You know, I, I am making this point publicly. I hope you're listening, Janie, because Janie did tell us this when she first heard the Fountas was, Pennell was coming in before your time even. Yeah, was she was time. like, this is not the program you want. So just, I, I hope she gets some pats on the back. And there's, two, and there's tools of it that yeah, but, you know, no, no, good. I, I just don't know. But, but it's, it's not going it's it's to it's 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 solve everything. You uh, does this answer, answer your question, question Bill? Yeah, and um, I find it heartening because we're basically investing in our, in our team. Mm -hmm. And um, and makes sense to me. And I think the professional development initiatives that you've got going, as well as the, the tuning and picking the right methodology or programs, whether it's math or reading, you combine those two things with continued teacher morale and good leadership by our principals mm -hmm. and support by the administrative team and hopefully the board. And it would be helpful that we can keep that that, that and positive direction. Huge yeah. Us. yeah. I mean, I sort of talked earlier about how proud I am of our students. You know, our teachers need as much of that sort of that credit as well, and it has been a, it has been a trying number of years for them. So maybe to make one more connection between the staffing pieces, um, and I, I'm sort of hesitant to say it without without Lindy here because she knows the bigger picture. But the one place where teachers who who um, you know what we call special teachers like art and music may may be helpful in, in even increasing that FTE as you already have planned is to be able to create a schedule. 
that really works for our students. And so I, when I was looking at the schedule of one of the schools today, I noticed that literacy for some pretty young kids was fairly late in the day. There may be a lot of number of reasons for that, but you might think that if that could move earlier in the day, they might also yeah. be doing a little bit better. They might have a better focus. Yes. That may be driven by a couple of different things. I haven't had a chance to talk about it, but when you have a, when you have a little bit more specials, you have a little bit more flexibility to say, we're gonna make sure our K through second graders have all of their core content in the morning when they tend to be freshest. All I mean, that's for anybody, kids and adults. Right, but no, and they, you know, but they, all, and they have fewer, they have fewer of the like strategies they might use to regulate themselves, whereas our older kids, you know, can do a special early in the morning and still get into their classroom and do a great. So there may be places like that where you don't want to actually pit these two budgets against each other, but think about how they work together to say, okay, well, an extra point two of art is going to actually help us move literacy earlier in the morning. What um, time of day are you teaching in the subject? Yeah, so and there are other pieces. That's Again, key. Lindy is really good at, at these pieces. There might be something trust, I'm missing. That's where we trust our administration. But that's where I just want to make sure we don't put things against each other when they don't actually need to be in competition. Now, you did us. say, you did say, um, oh, we could always use money. So what area, <laughs> what, what, what area were you thinking in particular when you say we could use money? Like where, where does salary. the programming, yeah. so where does the programming, mean? well, I mean, if salaries, that, then we give our instruction to our SU board and, and our negotiators and say, this is time to give them, you know, um, you know, give them some money. I don't, you know, that is our right to say, we really believe in our teachers. We want to give we them. We want to invest in them. I mean, that is something we can tell them. I know, you know, negotiators might be like, oh, no, no, no. I don't know. That, <laughs> but where is, where were you thinking? Of? Well, so, as we said before, the, the money that we've had available through the federal grants related to COVID mm -hmm. has really supported um, us being able to expand the professional learning. So we have these courses that are running on yeah. these five SU Fridays. A lot of those are being run externally from a math initiative, gotcha. um, Vermont, you know, Institute of Natural Sciences, the VPA is coming in. We've got lots of different ones. We, will, we, we won't be able to do as many of those. We also are building capacity in, internally to be able to take over some of them. But that's gotcha. the type of thing that, like, we, we talk about professional learning and making sure that our folks are using well, I think it. it's just huge. The best, like, the best information is out there. Science huge. of reading yeah. has changed dramatically in five years. We couldn't have known all this five years ago. So we, the only way we're going to get on top of it is to be able to access all that. So that's the kind of thing where... So, so what we're, do we need to know well, money-wise? What I'm saying is the SU, is that that's an SU, right, for BD, uh, where the money comes yeah, to... I'm not concerned year. about that for next year. Okay. Right. That's, okay. Yeah, that's, 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 but you will tell us when... Yeah. Hey, that's we need your own like, investment. I, in, yeah, in, how important it is. Yeah. And remember, I mean... I know there's time. So anyway, we still have a lot of unknowns with our budget. And what I mean by that is we still got to come up with this oh, of funds course. we just saw, right, to... to but at least we get to that. talk about the things we actually do yeah. have some And money. you're going to have to eventually budget for a 1.0 map. And so you're only seeing 0.5 in this because we can carry an S for one more year. Okay. Eventually, you're going to need a budget for the full. Gotcha. Right? So there are still things that we're going to be adding to your budget, but we're trying to add it to it strategically. Yeah. So we don't have so to that it's not, yeah. It's not the cliff. The yes answer cliff, which I'm sure some schools are facing, where it's like, Okay, we're not doing any of this anymore. You know, just, just, you can't, the free money is gone. Yeah, so we need to stop worrying. Like, what's that? It's a lot of work for this money. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it's not free money. No. Yeah. So we have to slowly look to add this into the budget. Is Good. The idea. Okay. Do you think we're being, so right to the top of your, do you think we're being reasonable in our increases so far? Yeah, I mean, I think well, Tara and I will have a lot better sense mm -hmm. when we get a sense of the yield. Yeah. Yeah. That's big. We have, but this is, as you say, this is where we put out. Absolutely. And last year, I think all we said we wanted was zero growth or you know, come back leaner. Yeah. yeah. And so I know like, this year, I feel that we very much in our in our board retreat, we made it clear that no, it's time to expand. It's time to maybe even raise the budget right. and be strong and say, hey, we're doing a good job. Let's show that to community. <laughs> That community. One thing to keep in mind is I think if we're going to start raising the budget, we really need to think about capital improvements too. Because as a community, people are going to see the budget increasing and the school not physically changing. Well, we're so hopefully doing something, something big about it. It's like that. looking at a no, the cover of a book. Yeah. You know, I mean, people see the school, they're see, they look at the building. Mm -hmm. 
the community that's, that is. They're not a parent. They don't see what's going on inside the school. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna feel more comfortable with the budget increasing if they're actually seeing a difference when do in we the see, building. Yeah, when do we see next building, month, you next month we'll see yeah. building maintenance budget. That's okay. That's good cool. to keep in mind. Well, I think that's a very good point to keep in mind. But I also think about, about building in a capital and increment every year. And it's not necessarily well, we're going to spend it right away, but we're building a capacity. Well, we'll put paint on it. Well, that's what I mean. Window so replacements, doors. Well, you know, here's the thing, too, is that I really think now what we do is we ask for what we want. And they come back and they say, okay, if you want this, this is what it is. And then we say, okay, that's too much. Now we bring it down to here. And we can take that's off great. one point here, one point here. That's negotiation. Mm -hmm. But I think at this play stage, yeah. and next okay. week, next month, you'll get your chance. We say, this is what we want. Mm -hmm. And then we and then we make yeah. it real. Well, we yeah. do keep mentioning, you know, you need to do a walkthrough with um, uh, EI. Yes, keep, it, keep it with us. Um, do you have something to say? Yeah. We need to do the walkthrough with EEI, but I think it's very important that we that we set up another walkthrough, say with Lyle, and oh, the trim, the trim over this. Oh, so, so we can kind of separate have, from the EEI to go over. As we were talking about yeah. the yeah. Yeah. retreat, yeah. And yeah. like our long term plan. We need to go to the way the, and the way the, the the trim, the water just is ruining the trim in the front of this building. So it has looked terrible for years. And I mean, but it's like such a simple little. All right, that's a long term plan. Yeah, yeah. 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 and I think you know, with, with my background, I can. Without putting too much thought into it, I can kind of make say, hey, this is what this would cost. This yeah, is what this would yeah. cost. That way we have a sense of it and be like, all right, well, you know, we have all these capital improvements outside of the outside, yeah, of, outside of the outside. Yeah. And yeah. I think if we're showing that we want to move in that direction and, and put money into the building, that's what the community wants to see. Well, some people, some, yeah. some people, but no, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Right on, right on. Okay. Well, that's I say, but I this is where we ask for what we want, mm -hmm. and then we negotiate, and we figure out what we can get and what we can afford. Okay, you need to move on. Thanks, Tara. Thank you. Thank Tara. you. Thank you. Good work. Uh, dominant funds update. So I put this on Amy just based off that email. Yeah. Do you have anything for us? Oh, sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, so, I mean, yeah, just to kind of start talking about it with like, everything. Well, I, you know, I kind of was hoping I would be told a little bit more about what I was going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> you can also. That's okay. Um, you can talk about no, whatever you want to talk about. We, I've been wanting to talk about our endowments for a very long time. Um, so, um, I think it's really important that Rochester has um, endowments that some of them have specific um, requirements and some do not. But I think we as a board are the ones who are supposed to be managing these endowments. And uh, at, about, at budget time, I think we need to decide how much of, of these endowments do we want to put towards the budget that we, you know, like I said, some have specific things that they can be um, used for. And, and others, but I think it's our job to say, okay, well, let's look at this fund. Let's see how much it's grown. Let's understand the interest rate. Let's say we feel comfortable taking five thousand dollars out of this fund and and putting it towards whatever, um, you know, the administration finds appropriate for for the budget. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know how the best way to go about doing that is. If it's, I would. May I make a suggestion? Sure. That would save us time tonight also, and I think allow us, um, would you have time to do a little primer for us of this budget? This is the stipulations, and this is the current balance. Yes, I and, definitely and then could. Send that to us, like email it to us, so that then we come to the next meeting. Knowing and understanding. Okay. The other thing I would really like to tap um, uh, Bill's knowledge, though, of investments in general you know because the other thing is we are supposed to be managing these funds like yes, literally managing. literally managing these funds are are should they can be we, should we, they be in a growth we, thing should they be in a well I, da, 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 thing oh, I, don't, we, I don't know that that's a, hire somebody to that's a second but, that's yeah, a second exactly. piece to this yeah, yeah, also yeah, something absolutely. that i want us to to discuss yeah. I, um, I think that's a very important thing. I don't think so. You, your recommendation is that I put together a little thing for you guys to read, think yes. about, and um, then we talk about the next one. How much we maybe want to 
Um, do we have an idea of what the total amount of the endowment funds is? It's it is in our um, budget budget um, ballpark even just general ballpark. Okay. Um, one of them is uh, 190. The other one is uh, 140. Uh, there's so one that is specific for um, scholarships, so that one has a, a good money in it, but or. Mm -hmm. That's for so we're talking two or three thousand, two or three hundred thousand dollars. Right. right? Um, and like I said, there is specific caveats on, on some of them. Yeah. Um, you know, like this one I was going to talk about tonight cannot be used for capital expenses. They believe that the community should pay for the brick and mortar concerns with lack of opportunities for learning and recreation. Also, the poor or culturally pride families in the area and that the principal knows best who could um, have best use of these funds. Okay. Yes. Um, um, is the uh, who's managing these funds right now? They are. I would s essentially say they are on autopilot. Um, are they in a? They are growing. Are they, <laughs> By us not touching them, they're well, that, they're that's growing. That's the, question. the question is, is if we had somebody that knew what they were doing, could they be growing more? Yeah, absolutely. Institutional. All right, and um, yeah. yeah. Maybe the party. Oh, go ahead, Robert. Yeah. Uh, the the the. Um, the, the trustees of public funds and you know they actively manage their funds so we can also but that's the only thing they're tasked with doing right Where's right uh, but I, i'm just saying that, <laughs> that is that is an option um you know some town elders who counseled me were not impressed with the oh. the performance of the <laughs> trustees of public funds um, i don't know that was just a but there there is some there are some members who are have a lot of information that they may be willing to share with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's start with knowing what these funds are. I okay. If, that's, if you feel good sure. with doing that, we'll um, come back with that. What I do have that might be really nice, I've been, is that um, we the name on um, the one of the um, endowments has our old treasurer. So just to switch over the name to our new treasurer and take um, Bonnie Bourne off of it. And it's Lindy Stetson. Um, yeah, so I don't know if we, and Lindy's not here. Or I don't know if it, who would fill this out as a corporate resolution um, and W9. We could take care of that. Okay. 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 Yes, that should all come to me ultimately, Amy. What? Last will be coming to me. Right. So, so you would be the one at every year when they. So you, you are on the, aren't you? Do you? I am sense? not. They. I was not put on when I requested to be put on previously. That's why every year at audit, I have challenges on getting this information for our auditors, because mm -hmm. I have no oversight and no access to these accounts, and I should. Okay. Who said no? <laughs> okay. We want names, dates. Okay, we really need to move on. We're okay. working on two and a half hours here. Do you want to give that to me? Yeah, yeah. okay. Thank you. Um, if that's you thank you, thank you, Amy. Yeah. Thank you for introducing us. And also, thank you for, you've taken this on for a long time to get, pull this together throughout the merger. I appreciate it very much. It was um, a fun investigation. Yeah. Um, Okay, we have book study. I would I would say for tonight, just because we are working two and a half hours, I would like to table four goals for tonight. Is everybody okay with that? I just think it's I think we're good. Okay, let's table that and let's go. So we get to our time with book study and then um, the scorecard. And then we have our celebration learning stuff. Oh man, look, so okay. we just well, I don't know, we just do the celebration learning. Well, we just you know, I mean, we've still got like about a half hour's worth of stuff between book study, book study, short card. Well, no matter, it says celebration of learning. Yeah, I think it's more than a half an hour. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, right now we have book study is 10, scorecard is 10, and uh, we were saying 10 for like, table nine, six, right. and so I think it'll be longer than that. <laughs> um, we don't want to rush them. 
No, I, Bill, how would you feel about the scorecard being tabled one more time? Uh, it's it's fine. I think that one is probably the easiest because um, the scores, the scores. Yeah, we only had a few comments. So I think that one could be done the quickest if we wanted just to be able to check that off. Yeah, um, but I also don't want to put, I, but, uh, I think Justine has a good point, which is, you know, this is, we spent some time figuring out how we want to conduct ourselves. And this is a, an evaluation of how we conduct ourselves. And we want to learn from that and just see whether we need to make any changes. So that one which probably helps not to be rushed. Well, I like management. Well, I was going to say, I, I've done my best tonight, but we are, we're pushing two and a half hours. Sometimes you can't. Is the celebration uh, of learning a video we're watching or somebody It's a video. That? Could they watch it on our phone? Or you could table it till next month. As long as we don't have somebody on here that's been waiting. No, 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 no. That's, okay, that's, let's, let's table the rest of the meeting. <laughs> I mean, my, that's my, you know, attempt. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, We've done a lot of work tonight. And a lot of really and let's, good. Yeah. And let's just put these, you know, drive close at the beginning. Yeah, let's okay. And let's and we'll get to it. Yeah. I do think next time, well, now we'll start. I was really excited about I think we the, should discuss this first. The though. book discovery? What? Well, oh, and also the, the four the goals in the Healthy River. River. I was really excited about yeah. that. Yeah. And there's two sets of goals. This was our goals, our set of yes. goals. What Ethan was talking about earlier is that we helped lead an effort oh, to set uh, to go SU board goals. SU board. Yeah. And so there's two sets of goals that I, we want to. Uh, I, 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 I got to say, I think my brain is is done. Mine is done. <laughs> no, I think we should table the rest for I think we should table the rest for No, I'm, I, I was just clarifying it for. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. I, I, I'm glad yeah. we're in agreement. I think we've done a lot of really good work. I think. It is really important to get our celebration of learning in when we're fresh and it gets us motivated to do the rest of the work. Yeah. And I think we should not move it again. Um, so we did it, we actually did it intentionally just so we you all would miss it. I mean, Thank you. I really appreciate it. Fault. It is our fault. Um, my I fault. Should, I, I suggest, Mr. Chairman, that we ask everybody, uh, sign everybody in chapter two. And we have one and two. One and two. This is going to be chapter one tonight. Oh, I said that chapter two. I think it all went through. Read two then. Yeah, read two and be thinking about one as well. They're like 15 pages. So that's like one page every other day. So it's good stuff. New hires and resignations. The second. We have one new hire. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, we were able to hire our teacher. Yeah. Uh, so it's Nicole Lilly. Yep. Um, who's actually a parent in your district as well, but teaches at um, the South Rolls Elementary School as an art teacher. Very good. Um, I had the pleasure of interviewing Nicole um, in the summer for the South Rolls position, and I just she has proven to be a really nice fit there. And so anytime that we have a position come open within the district and we have a person filling a part-timer, we try to link those positions up the best we can to create more desirable positions Excellent. Um, within the SU. So um, Lindy was able to interview Nicole and offered a position for her. And so we're excited to have Nicole joining us here at our site as well. Yay. Do we need to accept that? Yep. I will entertain a motion to accept Nicole Lilly as a new hire as a part teacher. So yep. move. Second. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it. Welcome. Um, next meeting date, Monday, December 5th, 2022, Stockbridge Campus by mm -hmm. Google Meet, regular. Uh, future <laughs> agenda items, we will be <laughs> EEI, -E EEI, -E I won't say EEI. -I -I. Probably between that, the budget, and your other goals and book studies and scorecard, you've got another full agenda. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think and and uh, Amy, we, we, well, Amy, we should revisit. We also have the endowments. Yeah, well, I'll send out to Why it's timely is that we may get when we get into our final negotiations on the budget. We want to know this information. Well, I'll send that out, and you know, you know, my suggestion, and and you know, we can have a quick feedback Great. on it, and hopefully, we can and maybe ask. Them. Can we get this much more information or something Correct. like that? Yes. I think Please maybe send we'll, me back um, maybe we should table the question of how to manage it until yeah, after I totally budget agree. season or after I totally agree. Or further in the budget season. So I think it's a really good point that we should have to be managing. Um, good. I recommend. Will we have any information about 
how much these these endowments are building. Really sure. sure. If you'd like, uh, I can give historical data from all that I know. Yeah, just, just the ballpark. So yeah. Okay. Know how much money we would have to play with. Right. And you, you know, you um, can see okay. the. Uh, the up and down just recently, you know, between even last month and this month, the, all the change in the market. So, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's hey, how far back your records go? Oh, well. Uh, really? No more questions. No more questions. Stop. Stop. Okay. Entertain the motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor, senior right by saying aye. Aye. Right. So, thank you for your work tonight, everybody. Thank you. Support the stuff.